When Dick Zorns announced his retirement, Eastern Washington turned to an assistant with Big Sky Ties. Mike Kramer's head coaching debut was a huge success, a 61-7 thrashing of Cal Poly. But this week, it's a different story. Don Reed and his Montana Grizzlies won a Big Sky title last year. This year, Big Sky MVP Dave Dickinson is back, and the Grizzlies are conference favorites. It's Eastern Washington. It's Montana. It's next. Looking live at Washington Grizzly Stadium on the campus of the University of Montana in Missoula, where this afternoon Prime Sports Northwest presents Big Sky Football, the Eastern Washington Eagles against the third rated Montana Grizzlies. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz. Welcome to Missoula, a picture perfect setting for our Big Sky opener and a ball game in the middle of September that may have repercussions come playoff time in late November. The Eastern Washington Eagles last year were 7-3. They felt they should have gone to the playoffs. They didn't. They're 1-0 right now. They feel they should be in the top 25. They are not. They are looking for some respect. And Artie Scalio, I think if they beat the number three team in the nation, they will get some. I don't think there's any question about that, Rich. They will get some. You know, the University of Montana will not be able to sneak up on teams like they did last year. They were picked to win the Big Sky Conference title this season by both the coaches and the media. So they, they don't have that going for them, but they're a very senior-oriented ball club and a great football team. Well, many people feel this Eastern Washington team could be a great football team. Mike Kramer, in his first year, is looking for someone to replace their big play guy of last year, and that was Tony Brooks. First play of the season last week against Cal Poly, he found that big play guy. Jason Anderson went 100 yards with a kickoff return. Here's your big play guy. What a great way to start the season for Eastern Washington. Jason Anderson will have to fill the role of uh, the, the fine wide receivers that Eastern Washington lost. But you can see he has speed, he catches the ball well, and he's an outstanding athlete, a big key to this EWU offense. Defense, that's what they're talking about around Eastern Washington because the offense is experienced and so is the defense, especially the front seven, a talented trio of linebackers. We start with Dion Alexander. That whole front seven for Eastern Washington, as you mentioned, Deion Alexander is just an outstanding player in all big sky pick. We'll, we'll be talking about him a lot today and Evan Brady, but you can see how they, well they go to the football. They're hard-nosed, and this defense really rallies. They need to protect their secondary a little bit. Yeah, it's a defense that is loaded with seniors. Protecting the secondary, defense, that is hard to do against the University of Montana. Don Reed loves to spread the field and throw the football. He has the perfect man for his passing game. He was outstanding last year. He's getting better this year, and that's junior Dave Dickinson. Dave Dickinson, Eastern Washington, has to figure out some way to contain Dave Dickinson. And when you have a quarterback who can do things like this, break a tackle, have the presence to go back across the field, and then find an open receiver, well, that's not an easy thing to do. And Eastern Washington will have to deal with that all day. Dealing with Dan Downs has been a problem for opposing defenses. You always seem to focus on offense when you're here in Montana because of Dickinson and because of Reed. But these Grizzlies can play defense, and Dan Downs, a two-time first-team All-Big Sky pick. Dan Downs, an outstanding middle linebacker, goes to the football, can cover passes, but you can see here the type of big plays that he will make. Quarterback sack, forces a fumble, gets the fumble. Pretty good statistics for one play. Here in Montana, high expectations. Their Grizzlies are third in the nation. Eastern Washington, well, trying to take a page from Aretha Franklin, looking for respect against the Grizzlies. A great way to start our Big Sky season. Glad you're with us. We'll kick it off after this timeout. One of the most picturesque settings for our Saturday afternoon of college football, Washington Grizzlies Stadium is a sellout today for Eastern Washington and Montana. championship and a perfect 7-0 record. He has a lot of seniors coming back and he knows that everyone in the Big Sky will be gunning for him. One of those men, Mike Kramer, in his first year, a long time Big Sky assistant at various schools. 
He's been at Eastern Washington since 1989. Of course, he takes over for the very popular and very successful Dick Zorns, who retired after 15 seasons. The series numbers. Montana leads overall and won last year in Cheney. But Eastern Washington has won three of the last four, including the last two here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Well, Rich, the Big Sky Conference, obviously known for its quarterbacks, and here's two pretty good ones here. Dave Dickinson, who will be vying for the Walter Payton Award in 1AA football, and Todd Burnett, really maybe one of the unheralded quarterbacks in the league. And we're ready to go. You can see the areas behind the end zone starting to fill up. Those are the grass seating areas. All the reserve seats are sold out. This place holds when crammed full of folk. About 15,500. They expect a crowd of right around 15,000 today. Eastern Washington getting set to kick it off. Tom Zerflu, the freshman, will boot it. And the very dangerous Damon Body. Both of these teams have exceptional kick return teams. And interestingly enough, Arnie, in talking to Mike Kramer yesterday, he felt one of the keys was kick coverage, not only for Eastern Washington, but also for Montana. No question about it important for both teams to get under footballs, under kicks, and punts as well today. So the 94 Big Sky season is underway, and Damon Body will start it from the six-yard line. Out to the 35, and the Grizzlies will have good field position for their first drive of the afternoon. The Grizzlies come in at 2-0. and oh. Their wins have come against... Carson Newman and Sonoma States. And Eastern Washington is 1-0. They drilled Cal Poly last, year, uh, last week. And uh, last year, this man had a storybook season. Dave Dickinson last year threw for 32 touchdowns. He ran for 14 touchdowns. And he led the nation in total offense. The Grizzlies, as they'll do most of the day, going from the shotgun with body in motion. Dickinson on first and 10. He throws short Scott Kernsey, one of his favorite targets. The kid from Tumwater is out of bounds at the 40. Today's lineups are brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. Dickinson, the quarterback, body is very effective coming out of the backfield and catching the football. A squadron of wide receivers, Earhart, Wells, Baker, and Guernsey. Baker is the career touchdown leader in Montana history with Guernsey right behind him. The offensive line is big and talented. Scott Gregg on the right side at 305 pounds. The senior is an NFL prospect. They're thinking about him in the first three rounds of next year's NFL draft. Second down and five. Four-man rush by Eastern Washington. Dickinson to Guernsey into Eastern Washington territory, and he's down at the 40-yard line. Defensively for Eastern Washington, lots of seniors, nine of them, the entire front four, Aronow, Steinmetzer, Alexander, and Martin, not real big, but very, very quick. A trio of linebackers, Alexander, a, a returning first-team Big Sky pick, Scott and Brady, and Brady, the Eastern coaches feel, may be the most underrated player at linebacker. Turner and Major are the corners, Brown and Moore, the safeties. Eastern does not have a whole lot of depth in their secondary. First and 10 at the 40, and there's movement on that interior line. And the Grizzlies, I think, will go back five yards. Rich, one of the things I think you're going to see Eastern Washington do today is really drop seven back into pass coverage and let their front four go. Take a look at Mike All Stanley, part. the referee for today. It's Montana gets moved back five yards. And that was something that Mike Kramer told us yesterday. He did not want to pressure Dickinson and let him get outside the pocket. And, and those defensive ends for Eastern Washington, they will try to contain, get up the field, not let uh, Dave Dickinson get outside. Let's see uh, how they do that. First and 15 now. Body in motion. Eastern showing blitz. And here they come. Dickinson can burn you. He finds Wells. Down at the one. Lost the football. They'll mark it at the one. Matt Wells, the junior out of Ashland. A 44-yard pickup, and that's what happens when you blitz Mr. Dickinson. 
Dave Dickinson is an outstanding quarterback, and he makes things happen very quickly when he reads the blitz. Boy, you can just see how Wells just gets behind the secondary there. Take a watch, Dickinson. The offensive front does an excellent job for Montana. He takes a little bit of a shot, but he delivers the ball. And Montana getting ready to go in. Dickinson into the end zone, and the Grizzlies take the opening kickoff. 65 yards for a touchdown. Dave Dickinson, who rushed for 12 touchdowns last year, gets his first rushing touchdown this year. Take a look at Coach Don Reed. You know that's the way he wanted his club to start. Rich, a lot of people thought this game might be a shootout. Every time you think that, you end up with a more of a defensive game, but certainly a picture-perfect per drive for Eastern Washington, or excuse me, for Montana to begin this football game. Andy Larson, the sophomore, in to attempt the extra point. And the Grizzlies go on top, 7-0. Don Reed, mission accomplished. His Grizzlies are on the board early on on Prime Sports Northwest. As you can see, not much time has escaped from this football game, and the Montana Grizzlies have already gone 65 yards. For the touchdown, they lead Eastern Washington by a score of seven to nothing. And Andy Larson, the sophomore, will kick it away. Jason Anderson is deep. There's a look at Larson, the sophomore out of Montana. And Anderson, of course, last week went 102 yards. They only give him credit for 100 in college, but he went 102 yards with the opening kickoff against Cal Poly. They try to kick it away from him. He's a yard deep, he'll bring it out. Anderson finds the seam. And he's out close to midfield to the 47-yard line. It's a 47-yard return for Jason Anderson. We talked about the explosiveness of both uh, re return teams for Montana and Eastern Washington. And Eastern Washington, after giving up that uh, opening drive for a touchdown, comes right back in great field position which I thought both teams might try to control the game a little bit and maybe slow things down and try to shorten it as we take a look at the scoring drive. But uh, certainly Montana's got to feel pretty good about going right up the field and scoring quickly. Now Eastern Washington at their own 47-yard line. Todd Burnett, the senior, out of Moses Lake is the quarterback. And he'll go up. Gerald Jackson with a catch at the 30. He's down to the 29-yard line. The lineups, of course, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Let's look at Eastern Washington offensively. Burnett, the quarterback, is a senior. David Lewis, just a junior. He's averaging 100 yards per game on the ground. Jason Anderson, Jesse Hart, Gerald Jackson, and Nick Shaw will be the targets for Mr. Burnett. Offensive linemen, they're always talented at Eastern Washington. Harold Fox is a preseason All-American pick. First down and 10, second play. This is Nick Shaw with the catch, and he's down to the 23-yard line. And both offenses finding no problems at all, moving the football early on. Defensively, for the Grizzlies, a pair of juniors in Duffin and Manzanares, Turner and Jones are the seniors. Great linebackers here at Montana. These two schools have cornered the market. Schilling, Downs, and Skates. Both Downs and Schilling, first team Big Sky picks last year. Burke Childs, McElmurray, and Gokachia are the defensive secondary for Montana. Second down and four. This is David Lewis who pulls over a tackler, and he's got a first down at the 15-yard line. Lewis is a junior out of Oak Harbor, Washington, as a starter. He is averaging 100 yards per game in his career. Rich, this is the first running play we've seen from either team. And you can see how effective Eastern Washington is with it. Just a good block by Ewing on that left side. And Peterson, the center, and Ackerman also on the left side there. But uh, Eastern Washington likes to run the football. Although they threw for a lot of yards last week, they didn't rush for much. They still are a running football team. First and ten. Burnett for his tight end Hart, who makes a one-handed stab at the 10-yard line, and it's a pickup of about six yards. Jesse Hart is a very talented and a very smart tight end, according to the Eastern Washington coaches. He's a junior out of Odessa, Washington. Watch on the left side of your screen, number 86, coming into the middle, makes a great one-handed grab. A pretty versatile athlete when you're 6'3", 235. Jesse Hart can play some wide receiver. 
and he is expected to catch a lot of passes, is a, really involved not only as a blocker, but a pass receiver in this offense. Second and five for the Montana 10. Eastern on their opening drive, Montana scored on their opening drive. David Lewis around the corner, dives for the first down, and he's out of bounds just short of the five-yard line. We're just talking about Jesse Hart. You saw him go in motion behind the offensive front, almost become a, a moving, pulling guard, and then the strength of the formation was to the right side. Got the ball out there to Lewis, and uh, he got around Manzanares on the end for a nice game. But this, uh, as you mentioned, Rich, this offensive front for Eastern Washington is very big, very physical, young in some spots, but a pretty talented bunch. Yeah, you know, Eastern Washington is one of the best-kept secrets, I think, in the Northwest as far as producing NFL talent. They have three offensive linemen right now in the NFL, two of them starters, and the other is playing a lot. We'll talk more of that. It's first and goal. Burnett with time overthrows Gerald Jackson, and that's not hard to do. Jackson is listed at 5'8". He's more like 5'5". Five five. Burnett would like to have that one back. Good protection, but Mike Boykachia from his strong safety or his Grizz linebacker spot, number 12, comes into coverage. Watch the offensive front. They do their job, a three-step drop. Ball is delivered just a little high, but you can see Boykachia was coming in there, and uh, Eastern really never had a chance to complete that one. Second and goal from the five. He's hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. And so the Grizzlies get to Burnett. Keith Jones, the senior out of Portland. Keith Jones applying a lot of pressure from his left end spot. Watch to the right side of your screen there. Fights off the block, and Burnett has no chance to complete it. They say the yardage down here in the so-called red zone inside the 20s is always tougher by the goal line. Let's see how Eastern deals with it. From the five-yard line, Burnett into the corner. His receiver went down, and it's incomplete. Nick Shaw was in a pile at the four-yard line. Burnett threw it to the corner. And the Grizzlies hold Eastern Washington will have to settle for three points. Burnett was expecting uh, his receiver to go up the field in a timing pattern, but quite honestly, Montana had it pretty well covered. The right corner over there, A.C. Childs, uh, he was in coverage, and uh, that uh, ball was no place to be found. This is 22 yards, and it's not a gimme. Zerflu is 0-2 on the season. Just a freshman gets his foot into it and drills it. So Tom Zerflu, now one of three on the season. And the Eagles are on the board. Likewise. Eastern Washington trailing the University of Montana. The Grizzlies third in the nation. The Eagles, a big sky dark horse. We're underway on Prime Sports North. You can tell that this ball game could be a, a very high scoring affair. Eastern Washington on the board. They settled for three. Zerflu with his 22 yard field goal. After, of course, the 47-yard kickoff return by Jason Anderson put them in good field position. Paul Wolf, the offensive line coach, former Washington State Cougar, down there in front of the Eastern bench. Damon Body awaits the kickoff from Mr. Zerflu. And he likewise trying to keep it away from Body as the Grizzlies try to keep it away from Anderson. And so the flag goes down. And the Grizzlies will have excellent field position to start their second drive. LeVon Major, the captain of the Eagles, and Mike Stanley, the referee for this afternoon's ball game. Grizzlies will get the football at the 35-yard line. Montana accepts the penalty and uh, start from there. There's Dave Dickinson. So Arnie Scalio, you blitz Dickinson once, you get burned big. <laughs> well, I think if you're a defensive coordinator, if you're Jerry Grable at uh, Eastern Washington, maybe you're thinking a little bit more about that and maybe, hey, let's go with the plan, maybe stay back with the uh, seven and pass coverage. Let's see what they do. A bad snap. Dickinson improvises, which he does so well. And he has a pickup of about eight yards. He's hauled down by Craig Steinmetzer. Rick, this is something that, you know, you can't coach 
he makes a play that's going to be a disaster into about a five-yard game. Watch the snap. Obviously, it's not even close as the presence picks it up, feels pressure, and then gets out of it. I mean, uh, that's just something that Dave Dickinson has done so often as a sophomore. Already we're seeing it his junior year, and he's got one more year to terrorize the big sky. Seven-yard game. This time they contain Dickinson. And he gets back to the original line of scrimmage, Troy Alexander, along with Jason Martin, there to haul him down. That's what Eastern Washington would like to accomplish today with that front four is to get some pressure. Dickinson with a, his normal drop, and now it starts collapsing on him a little bit. And we talked about the contain. The defensive ends did a good job getting up the field, forcing Dickinson to go to the center of the field, to go straight up the field and not to the outside. Ball at the Montana 42, Damon Body is short of the first down by about a yard and a half. And a nice job by Rob Aronoff, the senior out of Spokane. These teams do not run, the, or uh, Montana does not run the football all that much. And you can see Eastern Washington's defense is uh, very solid. Ranked uh, in the top two categories in every statistical department last season. Led the big sky in scoring defense, and you can see why they go to the football quite well. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. Levon Major deep for the Scott Guernsey punt. Guernsey, of course, a talented wide receiver, doubles as the punter. Major makes the catch inside the 10. Not a good idea as he's taken down at the eight yard line. Not only was that a long kick, it was a high kick. And Eastern Washington couldn't get a wall set up, and Montana did an excellent job getting down the field. One advantage I feel that Montana has is in the punting game because Guernsey is very experienced. He's averaging almost 44 yards per kick. And Zerflu, the freshman kicker for Eastern Washington, also doubles as the punter, and he's struggled a bit early in the season. Penn State's answering some questions. Boston College has yet to score in their new rebuilt stadium. Ohio State on top. Eastern Washington first and 10. David Lewis gets the carry, and he's out to the 15-yard line. Arnie, if there's a trademark for Eastern Washington in the Dick Zorn's years, was their balance. They could always run the football. They could always throw the football. They did, and I think that they really liked to run the football first. That was one thing about the Eastern. They really liked to establish the running game, and if you could not stop the run, I mean, you're going to see it all day. I think perhaps maybe this team under Mike Kramer, a little more balanced. They do so many of, the, of those same things well. They run well. They block well. They catch the ball well. Lewis picked up five, and so it's second and five. Eastern at their own 14-yard line. Heart in motion. Lewis again. And this time he runs into Marty Duffin, the junior, and Dennis Skates, one of the linebackers from Montana. These two schools have cornered the market on great linebackers because Schilling and Downs were first team picks last year, as was Dion Alexander. But really have uh, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of excellent linebackers in the big sky. You think of Duke Garrett at the, at the University of Idaho. But not only do these guys play the run well, they prevent their teams from having to go into nickel and dime packages, but they play against the pass as well, too. All very versatile athletes. Lewis trying to get outside. Childs hits him. Lewis dives, and I think he has the first down. He needed to get just past the 19, and he has the first down. Lewis, only 26 yards last week. Eastern Washington threw the ball a bunch and didn't run it much last week, and it's probably because Cal Poly blitzed them the entire ball game. Yeah, they did. That's really true. Eastern did not want to bang up the running back, so they, they threw the football. You can see David Lewis with the good speed. He's had some injuries during his career, but in his last seven games he started, he's averaged oh, about 105 yards a game rushing. 7-3, Montana on top of you just joined us. Eastern at their own 20. Burnett over the middle, and he overthrows his big tight end, Jesse Hartz. Todd Burnett had a tremendous year last year, and I felt he was really overshadowed by Walter Payton Award winner Doug Nussmeyer at Idaho, and of course, Mr. Dickinson, the Big Sky MVP. Last week, he put up 343 yards. He's the top-rated passer in Eastern Washington history, eclipsing the record of a former Eagle, Bill Diedrich, 
who's now the offensive coordinator for Jim Lambright at the University of Washington. Burnett's lost some weight, about 20 pounds, got a little better foot speed, and I think that'll prevent him from getting injuries this year. He had a few injuries last season. He played at 240 pounds last year. He finds Hart this time, and Hart is out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Oh, a nice read by Burnett, because with Ace and Childs at 5'10", and uh, Jesse Hart at 6'3", there's just, you know, that's just a total mismatch, especially if you can get the ball to the sideline and then have Hart's body between uh, the sideline and Childs. I mean, he's good good protection, starts breaking down a little bit. Now they didn't get very close to him at all. And uh, when you're a quarterback, you're able to deliver pinpoint passes when you have that kind of protection. Good job by the Eastern offensive front. Eastern Washington has moved the football from their own eight out to the 32. Lewis being chased, and he picks up maybe a yard. Kurt Schilling from his hero outside linebacker spot for uh, Montana, really forcing the issue and then getting some help on the corner. But you can see that Eastern Washington pretty well conceived uh, drive to start with, punching out with a few running plays, and now you know trying to get some things established on the ground, which they thought they probably would. Watch 39 there on the left of your screen, forcing outside Eastern, trying to get away from it, and then the corner over on that side came over and closed it down. A gain of one, second and nine. Burnett for Hart overthrows and it's incomplete. Keith Burke, the senior, almost with an interception. Thought the pass may have been intended for Jason Anderson because Hart uh, was starting to go up after the football and then came, came back down, but uh, was in between both of them. Montana's defense starting to step up a little bit here. Yeah, Hart's getting a real workout. Well, he has been a favorite target, and he'll head to the sideline. As the Eagles are faced with third down and nine. Six and a half minutes left, first quarter. 7-3, Montana on top. Burnett hit again, incomplete. And the Eagles will have to punt the football. So both defenses, after watching the other offense march down the field on the opening drive, had stiffened up on the second drive of the game. Again, good pressure by Montana. Eastern front just does not have the time. As you look at Corey Falls there, uh, getting in from his defensive end position. Here is Zerf Lou on to punt. Baker looking up into the sun. And the ball will be down back at the 32-yard line. You can see Antonio Morgan went up and batted the football. And Montana will take over. Grizzlies on top, 7-3. University of Montana, former coach of the Oregon Ducks, has also coached at Portland State and Oregon Tech. He wrote the book on passing. Literally, he wrote the book on passing. Crunch Sports Northwest heads to the Pac-10 volleyball action. The Ducks and the Sun Devils all at 4.30 today right here on Prime Sports Northwest. Montana, first down and 10. Their own 32. Not a big rush on Dickinson. Out of the backfield, he finds Kelly Stims. Pickup of about seven. And it's second down and about three. Little, little different uh, defensive look for Eastern Washington as you look at these three wide out receivers for Montana. And you see Stensrud out of the backfield the left side of your screen, but Eastern in a three, more of a three four set that time. In defensing a Dave Dickinson, Eastern Washington wanted to give him, especially early on, as many different looks as they could. They know he's smart. He's got a 3.8 grade point average in molecular engineering. So he'll figure out the defense. Here's the pitch to Stensrud. That's a forward pass and a first down. And Stensrud is across 
the 46-yard line. But Eastern Washington wanted to give as many looks as they could to Mr. Dickinson. Well, now what they're doing is they're almost dropping eight in pass coverage. And you saw the little shuffle pass there by Montana. And just really is, is like a running play. It's a pass, but it might as well be a running play. Watch here. Stensrue just looks. Quick up and in, right by the defense through the middle, and a very safe and high percentage of play for a first down. Stens root in motion on first and ten. On ten at their own 46. Over the middle, Earhart couldn't hold it. And it's incomplete. Mike Earhart, the sophomore out of Eugene. Montana's receivers finding uh, some of the seams in that zone that the Eastern Washington's playing. You can see the front four of Eastern trying to come in. Dickinson, a straight drop right over the middle to the post. And a catchable pass. Would have been a tough catch, but Earhart uh, might have had that one. Ryan Moore on the coverage. Very Dickinson-like number. Big Sky MVP on the offense last year. Again with plenty of time. Wells over the middle into Eastern Washington territory. And the Grizzlies with a first down, a pickup of about 16 yards. Rich, I know the pass went to Matt Wells, but Shalon Baker from his wide receiver spot, watch it in the middle of your screen. You'll see number two streaking, and no one picks him up, and he is wide open. Let's take another look. I know they complete the pass, but watch number two. He is, the safety is, is nowhere close to him. I mean, if you lead Shalon Baker with a pass like that, it's a quick six. Let's see uh, what they do this at this play with Baker. the shotgun, throwing short, Stensrud. One of the things that is most effective about Montana's offense, yes, they use four receivers, yes, they spread the field, and they can throw it deep, but the short screens and, and the little hitch passes and, and, and all of those things that, that are not big gainers turn into big gainers because uh, you spread the defense, you open up a lot of holes. Well, you do, and there's so many, there's so many checks and and so many things that Dickinson does well, he looks off a first receiver, a second receiver. He'll go to the third or the fourth guy. And it looks like we have a spearing call against Eastern Washington. Let's watch at the end of the play. On the defense. Plays over. And that's leading with the, with the shoulder pad and the helmet a little bit. And uh, that's going to get you a flag every time. Yeah, that's a good call. First and 10 at the Eastern Washington 15. Montana on top, 7-3. to three. Four minutes and 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Eastern showing blitz. Here they come. Dickinson unloads. Stands through with Bragg in front. He'll step into the end zone. Touchdown, Grizzlies. Well, it looked like Eastern Washington was bringing the house, and they dropped a couple of guys back into coverage. But when you see that as a quarterback, you want to try to get outside as quick as you can. And what a what better call than a screen pass? Worked perfectly. Kelly Stensrud dancing into the end zone. One of the reasons why six foot nine, three hundred and five pound Scott Bragg, the right tackle. Watch him get outside and block. Boy, you could see that Eastern Washington's defense knew as soon as the offensive lineman from Montana released, they were in some trouble, tried to get outside, but it was too late. Happened too quickly. Andy Larson misses the extra points. And so the Grizzlies and Kelly Stensrud get the touchdown. They will settle for a 13-3 lead right here on Prime Sports. Northwest armed to be a great quarterback. Watch Dave Dickinson. Watch his head as soon as he gets the snap. He looks to the left quickly. The defense maybe goes that way, but all of a sudden, right back to the right to Stensrud, and now it's a foot race. He picks up his blockers, and it's a beautifully executed screen pass that Montana scores. Grizzlies on top now, 13-3. Andy Larson will kick it off. Remember the last time he touched the football, Jason Anderson went 47 yards and almost busted one. 
That ball looked to be out of bounds, but they're going to rule it a touchback. Anderson lobbying for it. Eastern, instead of getting the ball at the 35, if it's out of bounds, will get the football at their own 20-yard line. Rich, you can see the kind of pressure that these uh, good return people for both Eastern Washington and Montana put on a kicker. They're asking kickers to kick it to one side of the field or the other, not put it in the middle so they can converge on the defense. Seven plays, 68 yards. And now Todd Burnett in Eastern Washington, who were stopped there last time out, get the football, David Lewis across the 25. A host of Grizzlies haul him down. Kurt Schilling at the bottom of that pile. Boy, good push by the Eastern offensive front. Kevin Peterson and Harold Fox, the, the center and the right guard. And you could see that uh, Lewis was up the field pretty well before uh, Montana's defense got to him. I talked about the legacy of offensive linemen at Eastern Washington. Ed Simmons in his eighth year with the Redskins. He's a starter. Kevin Sargent in his third year with Cincinnati with the Bengals. He's a starter. Trent Pollard last year on all Big Sky picking an All-American. Now with the Cincinnati Bengals, he's seeing a lot of time this year. That's an awful lot of NFL talent. And that's an awful lot of hit there. As Lewis hammered by Garrett Venters, the senior out of Richland. Garrett Venters from his inside linebacker position, number 51. Let's see what he does. Really is unblocked, and he meets the ball carrier head up, just like what you want to see. Squared to the ball carrier, lowered the shoulder. Garrett Venters and Dennis Skate share that position. They're co-starters, and they'll trade off uh, from series to series. Montana's defense uh, kind of waking up here, and uh, Eastern Washington wants to talk about it. John Burnett coming to the sidelines, and he will talk with Mike Kramer. Kramer, you can see him down there along with uh, J.D. Sollers, the offensive coordinator. Kramer last week, Arnie, in his head coaching debut was so excited because as a head coach, you get to wear the headsets, and you get to talk to the offensive coordinator when you have the ball, the defensive coordinator when you're on defense. Well, Jason Anderson returns the opening kickoff, 102 yards for a touchdown. The point after team is so excited, they race onto the field, and as they do it, they pull the wire out of Kramer's headset. He never got to talk on the headset all last week, but uh, you can see he's carrying his own wires this week. He doesn't want anything happening to him. Well, communication is obviously so important from uh, the press box down the field, but it, it, it probably didn't hurt last week that Eastern Washington put 61 points up on the board. He probably didn't miss those headphones at all. Kramer in the Eagles face with third down and three. Just a beautiful afternoon in Missoula, Montana. A sun soaked crowd, temperatures about 80 degrees. Third and three. Eastern at their own 27. Rex Prescott has checked in. He's in the backfield. Hart is wide open. Instead, Burnett goes deep for Anderson, who makes a great catch despite being pushed. And they will call it incomplete. Anderson looked like he was pushed just as he made that catch. And he did not come in inbounds. The cornerback on that left side is Keith Burke, number 18 for Montana. A little play fake by Eastern Washington. And this is one heck of a throw, but watch Burke in there. There was a little shove, but they say he's out of bounds. Pretty good coverage, though, by Keith Burke. And Shalon Baker now back to receive the kick of Tom Zerflu. There's Baker. He is dangerous. Montana led the nation one double A football in punt returns last year. And Baker was a big reason why. Bad snap. Real trouble. Zerflu gets it off. And it's a disaster for Eastern Washington. Fritz, last week, Eastern Washington had some problems with their long snaps and uh, we see it again today Tom Ackerman is the long snapper for Eastern Washington let's let's see what happens with it this ball is well tough one it's if you're a kicker you want it low you want to try to field it low you don't want it to miss high Zerflu may have been able to stop that but uh, he they have had some problems with the snap I, I 
in looking at the replay, the snap was not as bad as I thought it was. Zerflu could have had it, but still a tough one to handle, and Eastern really backed up now. Dickinson and company back in business at the Eastern 19-yard line. He'll scramble, but oh, Rob Aronow there to make the tackle. And it's a gain of maybe a yard. Eastern doing a good job on containment coming up the field and uh, having to go into the middle is Dave Dickinson. He still picks up a few. Some scores from around the WAC and the rest of the nation. Arnie's pokes are on top. That's always good news. Second down, long nine, call it 10. To the sideline, Wells, first down Montana. The danger in trying to contain Dickinson is that you sometimes give him all the time in the world. Eastern Washington trying to play a little game with their front four, looping the tackles around the ends. Watch the move Wells puts on number 48, Evan Brady. Spins out of it. Now he waits for a blocker, picks one up there, and gets another couple of yards. But at 5'7", 160, you certainly have the advantage, especially if you have a quick feet like Matt Wells, of those oncoming defenders. You can take them on one at a time, at least. Tim Scott in your picture. First and goal from the nine. A quick screen to Earhart. Touchdown, Montana. A well-oiled machine is this Grizzly offense. Well, you can see that uh, Evan Brady from his weak outside linebacker position was closing fast on Dave Dickinson, but he gets it off to Earhart. Watch the left part of your screen from their pistol formation. Here comes Brady and Dickinson. Knows he'll have a receiver on the outside. He had two of them there. Earhart came back into the football. You know, and Dickinson didn't look to see if Earhart was there. He threw to where Earhart was supposed to be. And it's a completion in this Montana offense. It's all for good. And the Grizzlies will go for two. Nineteen to three right now. Dickinson rolling, looking for Guernsey. Twenty-one three, an explosion by the Montana Grizzlies. Have the fans on their feet in Missoula. Dickinson to Earhart for the touchdown to Guernsey for the two-point conversion. Here's a look at the touchdown. Okay, you can oh, oh. It's behind the line of scrimmage, okay? The pass is behind the line of scrimmage, so you can go up and block up field. So there's a pick, and that is legal. If it's behind the line of scrimmage. If it's behind the line of scrimmage. That's something that Montana does very well. Not only with their receivers, Arnie, but a lot of times they'll get their linemen out in short screens such as that. Well, they're so effective because the receivers are so good off the ball and so quick. But as long as that pass is completed behind the line, that's legal to block. Let's take another look at the touchdown play with Earhart. Watch now to the right of your screen. High snap. Dickinson knows he's going to be there. Gets inside and he scores. The Montana's receivers the ball is delivered right where they want it most of the time, but on that two-point conversion, Scott Guernsey made a nice adjustment on the football after the initial pass, where, where, what I should say is where Dickinson wanted to throw the ball, he was covered, he, he kind of curled back into the inside and caught the two-point conversion. So these receivers and Dave Dickinson uh, at Montana are uh, pretty much in tune. Anderson from his goal line. To the 27 yard line, and now the onus is really on Eastern Washington because Montana has dominated this football game after Eastern Washington, of course, drove down the field, got their field goal, 
and made it seven to three. <laughs> well, you don't see this happen very often. Occasionally it does. Two helmets, the face mask, get interlocked. And uh, boy, I wonder what they're saying to one another, especially if one guy's blocked the other. Steve Matson was the Eastern Washington <laughs> player. I didn't catch the Grizzlies number. Zula, Montana, sellout crowd at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Rich Waltz, Arnie Scalio. The Montana Grizzlies on top. Their fans from his goal line. Out to the 27-yard line. And now the onus is really on Eastern Washington because Montana has dominated this football game after Eastern Washington, of course, drove down the field, got their field goal, and made it 7-3. to three. <laughs> well, you don't see this happen very often. Occasionally, it does. Two helmets, the face mask, get interlocked. And, uh, boy, I wonder what they're saying to one another, especially if one guy's blocked the other. And... Steve Matson was the Eastern Washington <laughs> player. I didn't catch the Grizzlies' number. Rich, I really think this is a very important uh, series here for Eastern Washington. Took the first series, went down the field, got a field goal, but Montana now has really opened this thing up, and Eastern has got to stay in contact with them. Nick Shaw in motion for Eastern. And penalty flags hit the deck. Looks like some movement in the interior of that offensive front of Eastern Washington. Let's see what Mike Stanley, our referee, has. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Okay, check out the upper part of your screen. Let's see if there's some movement there. Well, it didn't look like the snap count was quite right. Uh, looked like Burnett was going back before the ball was, and like the right tackle may have moved a little bit. From their own 22, Shaw on the short screen. They'll have a gain of maybe three. Penalty flag goes down. This and Burnett might have been hit late in the backfield because he's kind of woozy. This flag was thrown by the umpire, and it could be a personal foul, but I think we're going to get holding against Eastern Washington. Let's take a look here. We were 0 for 2. <laughs> well, it's ineligible let downfield. Be hard to tell uh, from this angle if, if there are. Look like they were setting up a screen over to the left side, but the call was an eligible receiver. Downfield. On the offense. First down. It's a five yard penalty. And I'll just keep repeating first down here, but Eastern Washington is digging quite a hole. It was first down in 15. And so it should be first down in 20. So far, David Dickinson obviously winning the war of numbers. I think Eastern Washington has been able to stretch the field, especially down the field, as much as they would have liked to early on. I think if you can credit uh, Montana's defense here, especially the last few series, They've, they've made some adjustments. And Eastern Washington has not had really great field position where they've, tr they've tried to run the ball out a little bit and get some things established. But Montana has come up with a couple of big third down plays. First down, 20 yards to go for the first down. First down. A little over a minute left, first quarter. 21-3, Montana on top. Eastern backed up their own 17-yard line. Grizzlies showing blitz. They only come with four. Jesse Hart makes the catch. Bounces off a of Grizzly. And he works his way out to the 41-yard line. Hart has been the main man for Todd Burnett this afternoon in Missoula. Well, he's described as a go-to guy in the Eastern Washington scheme of things. And you can see he's a big target out there. And that was a huge first down for Eastern Washington. They were backed up against their own goal line. Good protection for Burnett. You see Hart right on the left side of your screen there. Nicely done. Settles in. 
and makes the completion for a first down. Now with some breathing room at their own 41-yard line. Off the hand, and it's picked off. Mike Temple, the junior, with the interception. And he's out of bounds at the 23-yard line. The junior out of San Diego on the deflection, a 25-yard return. And the Grizzlies again have great field position. It's when Eastern Washington has something going. Pass is thrown a little high, and there you see Temple at a Grossmont College in San Diego. And they practice that, uh, they practice the drill defensively day in and day out, the tip drill. And that's one of the uh, most interesting, or one of the easiest interceptions that uh, Temple will get. And Don Reed going down to congratulate him. Almost uh, beat him down there to the end zone. Well, the bad snap on the punts gave Montana the football at the Eastern 19. They have it here at the Eastern 23 on the interception. Damon Body, nicely defended by the Eagles. Evan Brady, the senior out of Yakima, made the stop. Troy Alexander there as well from his tackle position. A little inside counter action. Montana trying to get something going with the running game. We're about to run out of time in the first quarter. Some questions answered maybe in our Big Sky opener after one quarter. We knew Montana would have a very good offense. Eastern Washington was supposed to have a very good defense. But right now, the Grizzlies are having their way with the Eagles. 21-3, Montana. Welcome back to Missoula, Montana. Sellout crowd at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Rich Waltz, Arnie Scalio. The Montana Grizzlies on top. Their fans have turned out in numbers. And why not? Third-ranked team in one double-A football. Numbers to crunch, Mr. Scalia. Well, you can see the passing yard is the big difference there. Total yardage relatively close, but uh, Montana has taken advantage of a couple of Eastern Washington mistakes, and so far that's uh, pretty much the difference. But look at that last stat, 10 of 11 for Dave Dickinson. Faced with second and 10, which quickly will become second and five, I would suspect. Troy Alexander lining up over center. David Kempford of Montana made contact before the ball was snapped, and that'll be uh, uh, five yards. Maybe changes your play call a little bit. I've got dead ball foul. Upside. Defense. You know, second and ten, go to a second and five, and that certainly helps. You see the, the penalties there. Add another one to Eastern Washington. Ball at the 18, second and five. Dickinson. This year has thrown for six touchdowns. Last year, he threw for 32. Keep it on the ground. Body with a nifty little move. A good pursuit by Eastern Washington. Evan Brady there to make the stop. Nice penetration by Craig Steinmetzer, the senior. And a big defensive stand really here for Eastern Washington. And, and if you only give up a field goal in this situation or get out of there without giving up any points, you still have a shot. But it's almost uh, a 28 to 3 deficit early in the second quarter is almost too much to ask. A lot of time to go. But Eastern uh, really looking for a big defensive stand. Loss of a yard, third and six. Every time Eastern has blitzed, they have been burned. They'll bring only three. Back to Dickinson. Nowhere to go. Across the field, picked off, and a tremendous defensive play by Evan Brady at the 21-yard line. Oh, Brady not only picked it off, Arnie, but I think he prevented what probably would have been a touchdown because he seemed to be the only Eastern Washington defender on that side of the field. Mike Kramer has described Evan Brady as the best player on his defense, but watch the versatility of Dave Dickens. How many times have we seen him do this? Bramlin, he's running around people, but he never sees Evan Brady here. Watch this. Two receivers out there, and Brady makes a great play. And Eastern with a big offensive stand, but uh, news for Montana, they're 
their big right offensive tackle, Scott Bragg, is going off the field a little slowly. Talking with the training staff of Montana, Dennis Murphy over there. We'll have to keep you updated on that. The two teams trade turnovers, Eastern Washington. With the football now at their own 22, and Burnett gives to little Rex Prescott. Run, Rex, run. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Mike Kramer calls Rex Prescott Eastern's secret weapon. At five foot seven, he is awful tough to find behind the huge offensive line. Well, you can see the, the tackle pulling out there, Kevin Cup at 6'5, 295. And then you got a running back that's 5'7, 155. But uh, he gets up the field fairly quickly. Rex Prescott runs about a 4-4-40, but he cannot afford to take many hits, only weighing 155 pounds. He's a freshman, a redshirt freshman out of Seattle. Second and two, Rex has it again. He fights his way forward for the first down. David Sermon, the sophomore out of Walla Walla, makes the stop. Take a look at the offensive uh, interior for Eastern Washington on that last play. As you can see, that Prescott went inside. You think of him more as an outside runner with that kind of speed, but he's not afraid to go inside. You can see the right guard there and the right tackle, Harold Fox, number 76, and Kevin Cup, number 75, getting Prescott with some room as Sermon comes in and makes the stop. First and 10, Eastern Washington, their own 33. Trailing in this football game, 21-3. Burnett, this time with time. Takes a hit and keeps on going. Last year, Todd Burnett weighed 240 pounds at six foot four. He was built obviously like a linebacker. He has dropped 20 pounds, and most of that weight, Arnie, was muscle. They, they kind of didn't keep him out of the weight room, but maybe redirected his lifting. So Todd Burnett, he can take a hit. Protection starts to break down for him. He's flushed to the outside. Montana, good job in coverage. Yeah, Burnett's going to go out. Fights off one uh, would-be tackler. The rest of Montana's defense converge. Prescott, no game. Nice play by Brian Toon from his tackle position, number 89, fought down the line. Got some penetration into the backfield of Eastern Washington. Out of Butte, Montana. They make them tough they in do. Butte, Montana. A lot of players at both Montana and Montana State out of Butte High School. From their own 40, third and four. Prescott, the lone setback. Burnett, wide open as Anderson has the catch and the first down into Grizzly territory at the 43-yard line. Rich, there's a good example of the respect that they have for Jason Anderson as a big play receiver. It looked like he was going to break it up the field, go vertical, and then came right back underneath. Burnett picked him out and delivered the ball uh, fairly well. Watch on the left side of your screen. You won't be able to see uh, Anderson's pattern, but this is a good throw by Todd Burnett. You can see that uh, there's quite a bit of cushion underneath there. Three defenders around him, but still more than enough for the first down. This is what Eastern Washington needed after the, the turnover by Montana was to get some kind of drive going. At the Grizzly 44 now. Here comes the blitz. Going deep for Anderson and overthrowing him is Burnett. Keith Burke locked in man-to-man -man coverage with Jason Anderson. And it looked like Anderson was trying to break it to the post. The ball was going more to the outside of the flag. But you can see what happens to your secondary when you start bringing the house, you start bringing a blitz. You can see the two receivers down on the right side of your screen. And the ball is just overthrown. I think Anderson broke that off to the post and Burnett thought he was going to, to keep it up the sideline. So it's second and 10. Still with time. Looking for Nick Shaw, and he overthrows him. And it will be third down and 10 now. Shaw 
a redshirt freshman out of Prosser, Washington. You know, Rich, I was watching Rex Prescott on that play. You know, we talked about 5'7", 155, great speed. But they leave him in the backfield to block, and he does That's a pretty a good job. Yeah. Here's a look on the outside receivers. And uh, some contact in there. Perhaps he thought that there was going to be some uh, running. There's no call on that one. And uh, Eastern Washington may have gotten a break on that. Eastern Washington trailing 21-3. Burnett gets rid of it. Gerald Jackson caught. Intercepted by Blaine McElmurray. Penalty flag down. McElmurray with the second Montana interception of the afternoon. Blaine McElmurray at the free safety spot who replaced the three-time All-Big Sky player Todd Erickson. Comes up with a big one playing that uh, center field, so to speak. Todd Burnett obviously would like to have that throw back. Pretty good pressure initially by uh, Montana. You can see that Burnett trying to get away, and this is just a tough throw. He's trying to go back to a receiver into coverage, but there you can see the move that McElmurray made to get the football. Looked like there was a clip there. Let's take a look at an end zone shot of it. But this is not a good throw by Todd Burnett. He'd like... Uh, when he sees this one on film next week, he'll he'll understand that. Had a receiver there, but it closed down. The ball had a little more velocity. He might have gotten there, but great play by uh, McElmurray. So McElmurray and Mike Temple have the interceptions for Montana. Evan Brady with an interception for Eastern Washington. That ended the last Montana drive. And the Grizzlies have the football at their own 11. Dickinson in the shotgun. First down. Nicely done by both Dickinson and Earhart, who sensed his quarterback was scrambling, came back to the football with a pickup of about 11. Eastern Washington going with, with a three down lineman pass rush, still was able to pressure a little bit. Mike Kramer's got to be wondering how do you contain Dave Dickinson? And Dickinson scrambles out, finds the receiver on the sideline. One thing that's so impressive about Dave Dickinson is he knows where every one of his players is on the field, where they're supposed to be, and the, and the ball is delivered. He doesn't throw many interceptions, as you saw. Brady's snap. That's tries to cut it in. Now goes out. Turns he off to the races. He's hammered at midfield, but he picks up a first down. Lee Brown knocked him out of bounds. Scott Guernsey is one of the strongest little receivers. I've ever seen. Montana is famous for their smurfs. Guys like Bill Cockhill, Matt Wells, and even Guernsey isn't all that big. But he's very strong and very active after he catches the ball. Well, he's six foot, he's 202, and he runs pretty well. And watch the blow he takes here on the sideline. Gets hit pretty good by Lee Brown, who, and if he doesn't come over from a strong safety spot, Guernsey is up the sideline for a long touchdown. Out of Tumwater, Washington. To Damon Body, he'll pick up maybe two. You know, Rich, we're talking about Scott Bragg and uh, a predicted high draft choice in the NFL. He is not in there at his right tackle spot. He's now uh, been replaced by Jason Baker. We'll try to get uh, an injury update. And There's a C, look. number 75 there, Jason Baker. He's 6'7", 294. Redshirt freshman out of Coos Bay, Oregon. But Montana has a huge offensive front, and even their backup players uh, can step in. Shovel pass, body has the first down. Well, there's a, a great example of Damon Body and how explosive and the speed that he really has. Gets the shuffle pass, and just in a half a step, he's going full speed coming right at you. Body, little step inside. Even though there was a missed block in there, he still got enough for the first down. But Montana does this very well with the shuffle passes and the outside screens to their, their receivers. 
11 minutes left in this first half. 21-3 Montana on top. The Grizzlies on the move again. Dickinson moves behind Matt Well. Good coverage by Tim Scott, the middle linebacker. Dickinson just sitting in the pocket with a, a lot of time, a lot of good protection. In Eastern Washington trying to get around the football. Ohio State bouncing back after that loss to the Huskies. There's a look at Greg. Greg, who uh, already been invited to play in the Senior Bowl, it's a predicted second or third round draft choice. We'll talk more about it as the game goes on. Dickinson with all the time in the world. Body racing to the sideline. Out of bounds by LeVon Major, a pickup of about three. Which I think Damon Body was really surprised to get this football. I think he thought Dave Dickinson was going to go up the field with it. All of a sudden, he had it in his hands, and you know he really made something out of nothing. Watch this. You can see Dickinson looking up and saying, okay, you take it over here. And Body was like, okay, thanks. I got six guys on me. Let me try to break it out to the outside. But again, a great example of uh, the kind of speed he has. Has to have some secondary help uh, from LeVon Major, who came up from his cornerback position. Third down and seven. The last third down the Grizzlies faced, remember, was the interception that Dickinson threw. Evan Brady picked it off. From the Eastern 35, body in motion. A three-man rush. Dickinson. Rolls couldn't hold it. He was falling down at the 10-yard line. Penalty flag goes down. Dickinson rifled that one in there. It would have been a spectacular catch by Wells. And it looks like another uh, ineligible receiver downfield call. And the umpire usually uh, makes that call. Flag came out. And I got to believe that Eastern Washington will decline this one. The officials on that. Mike Kramer pacing the sideline for Eastern Washington. Ineligible downfield. On the offense, penalty is declined, fourth down. So it's fourth down, and you know, this is almost a gray area here because Andy Larson does not have great range. His longest field goal of the year is 42 yards. If they were to kick this one, it would be 52 yards. Don Reed and the Grizzlies might just go for it, and it looks like they will go for it. On fourth down and seven. With the way Montana's defense has been playing here thus far in the first half, it's a good call. Wells in motion on fourth down. Dickinson lost the ball. He's going to quick kick it. A Montana bounce, and Baker downs it at the one. What can't Dave Dickinson do? Well, Montana has used the quick kick a lot since Don Reed has been the head coach at Montana. Hadn't thought about it, but uh, you look at it, it's pretty smart, especially since you down the ball on the one. Eastern has 99 yards to go when we get back on Prime Sports Northwest. Rich Waltz, Arnie Scalio in Missoula, Montana up big early. Eastern Washington back up to their own one yard line. Todd Burnett flags hit the deck. Anderson, he breaks into the open. He's got a lot of speed. Jason Anderson, flags are down in the end zone. Anderson is 20, he's to the 10, he's into the end zone for a touchdown, but there are flags, two of them sitting back at the other goal line. Jason Anderson taking the pass, it's against Montana, it's a 99 yard touchdown catch for Jason Anderson. And outside, flash. on the defense, penalty declined, Touchdown. Wow. Exciting player, Jason Anderson. When Montana was stacked in there pretty good. I think Eastern Washington crosses things up. Anderson catches the ball actually about a yard deep, and now he gets a little bit of a seam, and now when he hits about the 40-yard line, it is a foot race. Asen Childs tries to catch up. He can't get there. And all I, can, I can tell you one thing, Richard, ties a big sky record of some sort. We'll try to find out when the last time it was done. But 99 yards, I mean, you look at uh, Jason Anderson coming into this game, he averaged about 20 yards every time he touched the ball. 
So last week, a 100-yard kickoff return. This week, a 99-yard pass reception, and Eastern's back in this ballgame. Just what the doctor ordered, Zerf move for the extra point. It's good, and all of a sudden, it is 21 to 10. Jason Anderson in Eastern Washington in a heartbeat. We're back after this. Anchor eat, you missed something. A 99-yard touchdown pass from Todd Burnett to Jason Anderson in Eastern Washington is within 11 now. It's 21 to a great call by Eastern Washington. You expect to run out, you know, a little bit of a run to maybe give yourself some room to work. A pass and the Eagles break it for a long game. A short kick, Damon Body, ever dangerous at his 11. And a nice play on the special teams for the Eagles by Eric Judd, the sophomore out of Okanagan, Washington. John Bonds throwing that touchdown pass for Northern Arizona. And of course, Burnett to Anderson ties it at 99 yards. And that was back in 1990, Northern Arizona hosting a game against Boise State University. The Hoquiam Flash, he's the nephew of Oregon State basketball coach Jimmy Anderson. And he always seems to have a great day in this stadium. Remember two years ago, he caught two second half touchdown passes now Dickinson's turn. He goes to body at the 25. Swarmed over at the 30-yard line after a pickup of about six yards. Montana still continues to do a good job of getting underneath Eastern Washington's defense. Eastern keeps rallying back to the football, but uh, when you can get six or seven yards in those short passes, you'll take them all day. Eagle defense has been out there a lot here in this first half. We still have over nine minutes to play. And they have two stops on their last two defensive series. Remember the interception by Brady and the quick kick by Dickinson. A bad snap on the snap to Stensrud, and Craig Steinmetzer is there immediately. The Grizzlies will lose three or four yards. Steinmetzer lining up as a nose tackle right up over the center on all big sky... Uh, first team pick last season that's a tough play to defend the direct snap to the tailback and it's the first time the Grizzlies have used it today Steinmetzer looked like he's looks like he's having a little trouble with his helmet we'll take a look at some scores Wow that would be a huge upset third down five loss of about two Dickinson to Guernsey First down at the Grizzly 47-yard line. Boy, what a nice pattern by Scott Guernsey and Dave Dickinson gets the football in there right between three Eastern Washington defenders. Watch Guernsey in the middle of your screen there. By one, they looks like they have him bracketed, but right between three defenders. And I thought that uh, LeVon Major might come up from his cornerback position. Uh, wasn't able to make up the cushion, but good pattern by Scott Guernsey. You can see why that he's a preseason All-America pick. On first and ten, Dickinson deep for Mike Wilson, who makes the no incomplete. He had it till he hit the turf and it popped loose. You know, Wilson, Rich, the junior out of Honolulu. I think that Mike Wilson got away with a little bit of a shove at the end of this play. Now watch this as we look right at Dave Dickinson, and Wilson is just flying vertical up the field on the right side of your screen. Just a great throw, but watch right, right there, the little push right there, got the defender off him a little bit, and he still almost came up with the catch. But it's second and ten for Montana. Montana going a little bit vertical. And Wilson checks out of the ball game. Back in is Matt Wells. Grizzlies on top, 21-10. Eight minutes left in this first half. Stensrud, he's swallowed by Ron Braxton, the senior out of Rancho Cordova, California. Now look at Braxton, 265 pounds. He is the biggest of Eastern Washington's defensive linemen. And their strongest bench press is about 425. And there was a guy that I'm sure can still bench press with the best of them, Mike Kramer. Former Idaho Vandal, assistant coach at Montana State. You know, as an assistant coach uh, at Montana State at, and at Idaho, uh, or at uh, Eastern Washington, had a pretty good record against Montana as an assistant coach. Eagles were offside, but they got back. Dickinson going deep for Guernsey over Major, and it's incomplete. He led him just a little. Good coverage by LeVon Major. 
Boy, to be a cornerback in this game, Rich, uh, it's, it's going to be pretty tough. you got really explosive receivers that can get up the field, and there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage going on. And uh, it's, you're just isolated. You're all alone when the football's up in the air. A pretty good uh, effort that time by Eastern. Major won't get much uh, chance to rest. He returns punts also for Eastern Washington. Guernsey, who was the other man involved in that play, is the punter. Not a thing of beauty, but it's inside the 20, and that's all coaches care about. It's out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Last time they touched it, Eastern went 99 yards. There's your score, Montana, on top of Eastern Washington by a score of 21 to 10. Coming up on Prime Sports Northwest, the Beavers and the Bulldogs. It's tomorrow at 5 o'clock, Jim Sweeney against the Beavers, Oregon State has generated some excitement. That's an understatement for this football game. There's been plenty of excitement. Burnett throwing short to his reserve tight end, Tim Hunsaker. Hunsaker makes the catch. He's out of Heartline, Washington. You know, an interesting thing about Eastern Washington tight ends, both Tim Hunsaker and Jesse Hart played at small schools in the state of Washington, high school football, eight-man football. They don't have tight ends in eight-man football. And now they find themselves playing one double-A football as tight ends. Well, I know that in eight-man football, too, they run a lot in those games. And uh, the tight ends of Eastern Washington are very athletic. Could be using wide receivers. Yeah, and that's why you see Hart right there lining up in the slot. Pick up a five. It is second and five. Todd Burnett, the senior out of Moses Lake, sending Hart in motion. The give is to Lewis. First down at the 35-yard line. We saw a lot of Lewis early. Then we saw little Rex Prescott. And now it's David Lewis. Watch the left side of your screen. A good line surge. Eastern Washington's blockers kind of float down the line of scrimmage. But big blocks by Kevin Cup on that side. And Harold Fox. As the Eagles get some breathing room. A good day so far for Lewis. Burnett throwing short, not a good throw. He almost uh, underthrew that football. The coverage by Kurt Schilling, the senior out of Shelby, Montana. Schilling almost came up with it, as you said, from his outside linebacker. Let's watch number 76, Harold Fox, right in the middle of your screen. He's taking on Marty Duffin. These guys hand-to-hand -hand combat. You know, Burnett has thrown two interceptions today. He threw three interceptions all of last year. On second and ten, Gerald Jackson diving can't make the catch. And Burnett paid the price. You can tell he's not happy with himself right now. Yeah, Jackson was out there in the flat all alone. Tough throw. You can see Burnett really uh, gets whacked after he throws this one. Right in the middle of your screen. Well, not bad. Looked like Keith Jones. I saw the tail end of it. I, I didn't see the original hit, and it was more of a push than a hit. Yep. So it's third and ten. Six and a half minutes left in the first half. 21-10 Montana on top. Ball at the Eastern 35. Play clock winding down. Burnett. Anderson makes the catch. Will they give him enough for the first down? I don't think so. He is short of the first down. Anderson thought he did have one. Keith Woods made, did a nice job in his free safety spot, closing on the football, and just about got there. Watch off to uh, the left side of your screen. It's a long throw. Watch number seven, Woods, gets there just as the football does, and they're right at the stake, and Eastern Washington has a decision to make. And they're going to go big. They're going to bring uh, three, two more tight ends in and then try to pound it here. Mike Kramer, just his second game as a head coach at the collegiate level. Three tight ends set, hard in motion. Burnett gives to Lewis. He's got the first down. Out to the 47-yard line. That's a gutsy call, especially 
when Dave Dickinson is on the other side of the field. Well, Mike Goikachia, the strong safety, got into Eastern Washington backfield. Watch on the right side of your screen, but he missed us. And good running backs can make uh, defenders do that. David Lewis made the first defender miss, and if he doesn't make that first defender miss, it's Montana ball. Good piece of running by David Lewis. The drive started at the Eastern Washington 17-yard line. It has progressed out to the 47, and it's first and 10 with five and a half minutes left in the first half. Glad you've joined us. Our Big Sky opener on Prime Sports Northwest. Burnett again with time, going deep for Jackson, overthrows him. Neither quarterback has been all that effective, Arnie, throwing deep today. That's right. Uh, the vertical passes have been well defended by the corners. And uh, the one long pass, well, actually, both long pass plays we've seen today have been the result of shorter pass plays and long runs off it. You can see that uh, Gerald Jackson is locked up in combat with Mike Temple on that side. But uh, as you mentioned in one of our breaks, Rich, you and I were talking that you thought that Eastern needed to go vertical a little more, and you're seeing him trying to stretch that Montana defense. See if they come underneath it now. On second and 10, Burnett over the middle, Hunsaker the catch. He's hit and holds on at the Grizzly 40-yard line. Tim Hunsaker, the junior out of Heartline, Washington. Dennis Skates was in pass coverage, had him bracketed fairly well, was underneath. In the free safety, Blaine McElmurray came up, but a good throw, and Mont uh, Montana couldn't quite get to the football. Eastern Washington with a very sustained drive here, what they needed to do. That's a scheme that maybe Eastern Washington can't do last year because Burnett at 240 may not be as comfortable as he is now at 220 pounds. Definitely has more foot speed, definitely. Whoops. Burnett moved, and there was some movement on the interior line. Steve Matson was in motion for Eastern Washington. He he was about two yards past the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. Ball start. So they'll move it back, five more, and it's first down and 15. Coming up at half, we'll visit with Ron Stevenson, Big Sky Commissioner. Get the State of the Union address from the commish. We'll have our scoreboard and highlights. David Lewis inside the 40, a nice pickup of about six or seven yards. French Eastern Washington's offensive front does a good job. They just kind of slide down the line of scrimmage and let the backs pick wh where the holes are going to be. And as we talked about, Eastern Washington pretty big. Watch how their offensive linemen just slide down to the left. All of a sudden now you can see that David Lewis gets some running room, picks out his hole, and Dan Downs makes a, a pretty good play trying to get back in, and the defense stops what could have been a long gainer. But the Eagles are very athletic in that offensive front, and they take advantage of that. Ball at the Montana 39. Second down and eight. Here comes the blitz. I think the play clock might have expired. The umpire, Paul Austin, dropped his flag. Dead ball foul. Ball start. I, I, I did. I thought I saw the right tackle, uh, Kevin Cup, maybe rock out of his stance a little bit. And that may have been, may have been why the flag came down. The play clock was at zero as Burnett backed out of there. The Eastern drive has stalled right now. Second down and 13. Eastern doing a lot of work and a lot of good work, especially with David Lewis on the ground. Lewis has about 50 of those yards. Burnett ships him around. Play clock down to one as the snap comes back. Anderson trying to step inside, face mask. And the completion to the 40, Eastern will get some additional yardage on the face mask. I don't think it will be a flagrant foul. Yep, it's either a five or a 15. Pretty obvious call. They're giving Anderson a big cushion, aren't they? 
I think they need to after uh, <laughs> after the 99 yarder. There you can see the grab by Dan Downs. Whoop. And I think this will be a five. He did let go of it pretty quickly. It will be a five yard penalty. A five yard penalty, face mask on the defense. And although it's not a first down, one thing it does do, Arnie, is replay the down, so it's still second down for Eastern Washington. And it sets up a little different play call. You don't maybe feel like you need to pass necessarily in this situation if you want to try to get something going with the run. Second and four, Lewis. Good blocking. He was untouched until he was five yards past the line of scrimmage, and that's enough for a first down. Eastern Washington getting good surge here in this second quarter starting to get their ground game established. They wanted to do this coming in. You can see Harold Fox, the right guard. You can see Kevin Cup, the tackle over there. And uh, you can see that Lewis is not meeting any resistance till he's four or five yards up the field. And that's got to concern Montana right now. We're under three minutes left. LSU trying to hold on. Auburn has now tied that ball game. Three minutes left, first half, 21-10 Montana. Eastern on the move, quick pop to the tight end. And that's the youngster, the freshman, Steve Matson, out of Nacelle, Washington. Nice quick call, just as uh, Burnett gets the snap, just goes right to his tight end. Watch off, off to the left, one step drop. Just kind of pushes it out there to him and ends up getting a nice gainer. Pick up of five seconds and five. At the Grizzly 24. This drive started back in the Eagles 17 yard line. Burnett short again. And Huntsaker. The Eastern tight ends have been well utilized in this football game. Huntsaker has caught a couple of balls. Jesse Hart has been used often. And we saw obviously Matson catching his first pass. You know, Rich, in talking to some folks that watched the Carson Newman game last week against Montana, they thought like the tight end had not been covered very well. But Carson Newman was a totally different type of team. They were an option team and ran the football quite a bit. And as you mentioned, the tight ends are having some success today. Huntsaker was a yard short, so it's third down and one. Lewis will pick up the first down and more. He's inside the 10 and he falls down to the eight yard line. And Eastern Washington is looking at first and goal now. A very impressive drive as they trail in this football game 21 to 10. To take a look, number 43, Randy Riley just can't quite get there. And now you get David Lewis squared up and you give him an opportunity to, to make a couple of cuts and a lot of people are going to miss him. Inside the 10-yard line, new quarterback. Torres C. Smith is now a quarterback for Eastern Washington. Smith comes in once they get inside the red zone, and he's very, very effective. He's a senior. Throwing to the corner, and it's incomplete as Smith was swallowed up. And a name you haven't heard too much of here in the first half, Johansi Manzanera has got a lot of pressure on Torsey Smith, but there's a flag way down on the seven-yard line. It's a How effective is he in the goal line offense? Well, over the last two years, the last 17 times Eastern Washington has had a first down inside the 10 yard line. This is not counting today. They have scored 17 times, including 12 touchdowns. Gives the defense obviously a little different look. Uh, you could run a little option. You could probably run speed option here, more rollout types of things. But Torrey Smith really gives a, a defense another dimension that they have to worry about. Burnett, you're going to see a pretty much drop back and, and some rollouts, but Torrey Smith has a much better speed that way. Kurt Schilling, the captain of the Grizzly, looking towards the sideline to Don Reed. I had a tight end on the offense, covered up, downfield, ineligible, replay the down. You know, Rich, I have never seen so many uh, calls, ineligible receiver downfield calls. I think that's the third or fourth one today. I think it's the third. They were explaining it to Coach Kramer. First and goal from the 13. A minute 14 is left in this first half, so the clock might be a factor. Smith lost the football. 
Grizzlies have it. Huge mistake by Eastern Washington. Well, Rich, that's one of the problems you can have. You can have problems with the exchange. Usually when you see it as the first play of a drive. David Sermon, the sophomore out of Walla Walla. And what a momentum switch for both teams. Eastern Washington trying to get some points going to halftime. Montana comes up with a big defensive stand. Now it's hard to see from that angle, but you just don't know if the snap got there, if Torsey Smith may have come out a little soon, but the ball's on the ground, and Montana will try to uh, hang on to it to end this first half. A minute 10 left. Let's see if the Grizzlies try to run the clock out or maybe try to move the football. Dickinson tries to move the football. Guernsey in a crowd with the first down. It's a pickup of about 12. It stops the clock as they move the chains. Montana has three timeouts remaining. And 67 yards to go for a score. Stensrud in motion. Dickinson to the sideline. Stensrud the catch, and he bobbled it. It's incomplete. LeVon Major made the hit, and Stensrud did not have control of the ball as he went out of bounds. The Montana fans don't like it. The official got a little help on the sideline from the Eastern Washington coaching staff. You make the call here. Dickinson looking upfield, decides to go off to a, a shorter pass here. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, the ball's out. Depending on where his feet were on the sideline, he was on the sideline, but the official ruled incomplete pass. Still stops the clock, though. Second and 10. Dickinson is thrown for two scores. He's run for the other. Baker makes the catch, and Major escorts him out of bounds. Not a big pickup. You can see time remaining, first half. Montana with the football on top, 21 to 10. And the most important thing right here with 41 seconds is that if you're in a third down situation, you need to make the first down. Are you in, in uh, four down territory uh, at your own 40 yard line or so? I don't know, it's a, that's a tough call. Third and five. An inside screen, Dickinson, it's not open, so he'll tuck it under and run himself. He's got a first down out to midfield. Arnie, Montana on top, 21 to 10. Obviously, they don't need a score, but I think very important that they get some of the momentum back here in this final drive of the first half. Eastern Washington really, in the middle of the second quarter, really started taking control of the game, although they were behind, but uh, they're coming back. Time out on the field. We'll be right back. 31 seconds left in this first half. Montana with a football right at midfield on top of Eastern Washington, 21 to 10. Dave Dickinson. Looking deep, throwing short. Stensrud, the catch, and he's knocked down short of the first down. The clock continues to run. Now they'll stop it, possibly for a measurement. I think Dave Dickinson asked for a timeout. He did. Did he? Yes, he did. Jason Martin made the stop for Eastern Washington. Montana has one timeout remaining after this one. Andy Larson, uh, he has a 42-yarder, the kicker from Montana. He's a 42-yarder. Last season, I think his best was about 46. Final score this afternoon for Dickinson over talking to uh, Don Reed. The Grizzlies, of course, come in at third in the nation. Eastern Washington, not ranked. And many people feel that they deserve to be ranked. And really on the verge of, of being ranked. They're awful close to the top 25. Northern Arizona in that same boat out of the big sky. Not a bad half's work, worth of work. 245 yards, two touchdowns. 
been pretty commonplace for the fans at the University of Montana to see Dave Dickinson post those kinds of numbers. Eastern Washington, early in the football game, blitzed Dickinson on a couple of occasions. On both times, they were burned. And Arnie, as they've gone into that contain mode, it's been a little more effective because I think the momentum in this game shifted back to Eastern Washington because of their defensive stops. And now Montana trying to regain some of that momentum with 20 seconds left in the first half at the Eastern 40. On second and short, it's incomplete. The ball bounced to Guernsey. It'll be third down and very short with 14 seconds left. Montana content to try to go underneath. See if they try to work the sideline, concerned about clock. They do have one timeout left, but they need to advance the ball probably another 15 yards to get in reasonable field goal range. And they do obviously need a first down. This is third down and one. Dickinson to Wells. That's the first down. The Grizzlies call a timeout. They'll have six seconds left. Probably not enough time to run another play from scrimmage. And Andy Larson is on his way out. Two things on that play, Rich. You could see that Matt Wells was trying to get out of bounds. He couldn't do it. But Dave Dickinson was right in the face of the official calling the timeout. From their pistol formation, Dickinson over the middle. Wells splits the defense. Now he's trying to get outside. And right now, Dickinson's asking for a timeout from the official. And Wells was calling for it, too. Everybody was tuned in on that play. So now Andy Larson, the sophomore, who is four of six, as you see, his longest, 42 yards. This will be a 37-yarder. Got enough foot, but he hooked it left. And Larson misses the 37-yard field goal with two seconds remaining in this first half. And maybe a moral victory for Eastern Washington. The Grizzlies, though, did move the football. And the Eagles will have one play from scrimmage before we head to halftime. Boy, tough momentum change for Eastern Washington, turning the ball over when they were deep in Montana territory, and then the defense hanging tough, not giving up any more points. And uh, Montana's been shut out here since about the 12-minute mark of uh, early in the second quarter. So Eastern making some changes, uh, hanging in there pretty tough, and they'll make more changes, I'm sure, at halftime. Burnett, we're gonna put it up, looking for Anderson. And it's incomplete. That is the final play of what has been a very, very entertaining first half. From Missoula, Montana, our big sky opener as the third-rated Montana Grizzlies on top of Eastern Washington. 21 to 10, stick around. There's your halftime score, the third-rated Montana Grizzlies on top of Eastern Washington by a score of 21 to 10. Hi, everybody, Rich Waltz with Arnie Scalio. Everything is advertised. Uh, the Grizzlies, lightning quickness, moving the football, getting 21 quick points. Eastern Washington's defense stiffened up. We got quite a football game. Yeah, Rich, it's always a game of adjustments, and certainly Eastern Washington made some adjustments there in the second quarter and started taking the momentum there in the second quarter. Uh, I think they're real disappointed they couldn't score right at the end of the first half, but certainly Montana, uh, They've been moving the football, not getting in the end zone probably as frequently as they'd like to. Well, so the Grizzlies, who missed that field goal as time ran out in the first half, have a 21 to 10 halftime. You're watching Big Sky Conference football on Prime Sports Northwest. Not a bad way to get to the football game here in Missoula, Montana as the Montana Grizzlies hosting Eastern Washington. It is the Big Sky opener here on Prime Sports Northwest. The third-rated Grizzlies have an 11-point halftime lead. Time now for our budget halftime report brought to you by budget car and truck rental dealers in Pullman, Pocatello, Spokane, Missoula, Boise, Bozeman, Flagstaff, Ogden, and Kalispell. The smart money is on budgets. 
Division One AA, top 20, the Big Sky Conference, well represented. We've talked an awful lot about Montana at number three, but Arnie Scalio, the Idaho Vandals at number six. Of course, they advanced all the way to the semifinals last year. And don't forget the Bobcats at 13. Boy, Montana State with a gigantic win last week at Stephen F. Austin. Montana State jumped from 24 to 13 in the poll. Just a big, big move. As you mentioned, Idaho, very solid again. A lot of respect around the country, and certainly Montana you know, in the same boat. So it's, it's been a pretty good uh, last couple of weeks, the first two weeks of the 1994 season. A sellout crowd in Missoula. Happy at this point. The Montana Grizzlies on top of the Eastern Washington Eagles. Rich Waltz, Arnie Scalia, let's take a look and see how these two teams arrive at a 21-10 Montana lead. The Grizzlies took the opening kickoff, drove down the field. This was a big play, Dave Dickinson to Matt Well. See Eastern Washington coming out with a blitz in the middle, and uh, Montana just beats Eastern Washington on the post. Wells doesn't score, but it sets up their first touchdown. Dickinson from that point would carry it in, a one-yard run, and the Grizzlies were off to a flying start. They had a seven to nothing lead over the Eagles. Eastern Washington went at a field goal, and the next time Montana touched the football, Mr. Dickinson, here comes the blitz again. Again, he burns him. Kelly Stensrud in for the score. Perfect call, a little screen pass off to the right side, picks up a wave of blockers, and Stensrud just follows it in and scores. The first two scoring drives combined for Montana, 130 yards on only 10 plays, and Stensrud's touchdown made it 13 to three. Eastern Washington had a bad snap on a punt, gave Montana great field position. You don't do that to Dave Dickinson. Here he finds Mike Earhart. See a little pick play, pass was behind the line of scrimmage. Earhart got a good block on the outside, goes in. And the Grizzlies were rolling at that point, 21 to three. It was Dickinson to Earhart for that eight yard score. Eastern Washington backed up to their one, not for long. Todd Burnett to Jason Anderson. Burnett picks up a block on the outside. Or I should say Anderson picks up a block and then there he goes, uh, just outruns the secondary. And just when you think Eastern Washington's gonna maybe try to grind it out, get some room to work and deepen their own end, cross it up a little bit and Montana got burned by it. 99 yards, tying a Big Sky record. Anderson from Burnett, 21 to 10 at that point, and both teams would then trade turnovers. Todd Burnett would throw two interceptions. Eastern would lose a fumble. Dave Dickinson would throw an interception. 21-10 football game, Montana on top. Here are some statistics to look at. Look at the total yardage in this football game. And it's, uh, it's really relatively close, really the edge. Uh, for either team is in rushing for Eastern Washington, passing for uh, Montana. Big factor for Eastern, the turnover margin, time of possession. Uh, as you might expect, Eastern Washington uh, would have more there. Third downs, both about even. So uh, relatively close football game at 21 to 10. The Grizzlies on top. They moved the football early. Eastern Washington's defense played much better in the second quarter. A couple of turnovers have really cost Eastern Washington. The marching band of the University of Montana in the sunshine in Missoula. We're back in Missoula, which is a fantastic place to be on a September afternoon. Washington Grizzly Stadium on the campus of the University of Montana. The Big Sky opener, the Grizzlies lead Eastern Washington by a score of 21 to 10. And Eastern Washington will try to figure out how to contain that gentleman. Dave Dickinson had a tremendous first half as uh, he usually does. He led the nation in total offense last year. He's not really a Walter Payton trophy. I guess he's a Walter Payton trophy candidate. And Steve McNair has stolen most of those headlines as far as quarterbacks at one double A. But Dickinson is just a junior. He looks like the guy that delivers your paper in the morning, the paper boy at five foot ten. But he is ever so dangerous. A Cosida academic All-American. Take a look at the numbers for both quarterbacks here in the first half. And, you know, they continue this up the rest of the year. Uh, obviously, they're both going to have great, great seasons. Uh, they'd like to take the interceptions back, I'm sure, though, that they've tossed today. All right, Doctor, give me some X's and O's here. What adjustments will Eastern Washington make, especially offensively, against Don Reed's Montana Grizzlies? I still believe that Eastern Washington needs to shorten the game, needs to have possession. Just what they did at the... At the middle of the second quarter when they started really taking the momentum of the game away from from montana 
and that was running the football and doing that. I think their defensive scheme is pretty good. They're dropping back into coverages, and, and Montana's taking a lot of the short stuff, but it seems to be working on the big third down plays. Eastern Washington's playing quite well. Speaking of big plays, Jason Anderson had a 47-yard kickoff return to get the Eagles going, and of course, the 99-yard touchdown catch. It was basically a, a catch and run for 99 yards for Eastern Washington's lone touchdown. And he's hoping he'll get a chance to start this third quarter. Andy Larson, the Montana kicker, has tried to kick away from Anderson with little success. This time, he'll keep it away from him. Antonio Morgan, a freshman with the football, and Morgan is out to the 23-yard line. And that's where Eastern Washington will put it in play. On the stop for the Grizzlies, Mike Gokachia. Eastern Washington offensively scored 61 points last week. They should have more points on the board this week. Two interceptions, one fumble inside the 15-yard line really hurt. So Burnett on first and 10. Nick Shaw in motion. David Lewis, who had 71 yards on the ground in the first half, picks up another four here to open up the second half. Dennis Skates on the stop for the University of Montana. Inside trap play for Eastern Washington going right to the ground game to start the second half off. You can see Harold Fox, number 76. He'll pull out from his right side guard position. Watch on the left of your screen, number 76, Fox. Picks up a block there. The back leads through, and it's a nice game for Eastern Washington. Gain of five. Fox, a preseason All-American, and he's a possible NFL pick. Lewis again. Met by a bunch of Grizzlies. Dan Downs, the senior out of Helena, the first to get to him. He is short of the first down. It'll bring up third down and two, and it sounds like Eastern Washington following your prescription here, Arnie, trying to shorten the game. The fumble and the interceptions really hurt. Eastern Washington moved the football. 238 yards in total, but only 10 points. Third down and two. We haven't had too many third down and shorts in this football game. Nick Shaw makes the catch, has the first down. As he's brought down by Mike Gokachia, the senior out of Stevensville. Eastern Washington, Rich, did a nice job setting that play up. A little play fake by Burnett and Shaw from the slot position. You can see the play fake there to David Lewis. And high percentage pass out to the flat in Eastern Washington at the start of a drive here. Eastern Washington had a five-minute time of possession advantage in the first half. And this has all the makings of a sustained drive, although Lewis gains just two as he tries to get around the right side. Jay Turner making the stop for Montana. Eastern Washington trying to spread the defense a little bit and go with the running back. Auburn came back to beat LSU. They were trailing by a bunch in that football game. Tigers have won 14 in a row. Second and eight. Burnett forced it into a crowd, and it's incomplete as Dennis Skates came down with the football, but he was out of bounds. And that's something that Burnett has done today, Arnie, that he, he didn't do all that much of last year. He only threw three interceptions last year, but forced the football. Well, he had a lot of pressure on him by uh, Jay Turner, number 93, and Johansi Manzanera's number 50. But watch how wide open Jason Anderson is. He's dragging across the defense. He wants the ball, but Todd Burnett could never find him. From the Eastern 36-yard line. Burnett going deep, looking for Gerald Jackson. And he overthrows him. 
no one has yet to hit on the big bomb today. Actually, it was Antonio Morgan in the pattern. Good double coverage by Montana. Free safety, Blaine McLemurray came over, helped out the cornerback, Asen Childs. And remember the bad snap that cost Eastern Washington seven points. The freshman, Tom Zerflu, is back. Tom Ackerman is the long snapper. And that snap wasn't all that bad. Zerflu just had trouble fielding it. Shalon Baker is deep. Mission accomplished, although Baker will get a returnable ball. Averaging over 20 yards per return this year. He's wrapped up at the 37-yard line. Nine-yard return, 28-yard punts. Welcome back to Missoula. Damon Body just hauling in a five-yard catch from Dave Dickinson. Montana with their first possession of the second half, leading Eastern Washington 21 to 10. And Montana has the football at their own and at their own 43-yard line. Body the lone setback. Another short pattern, Guernsey with the catch. Brady makes the stop. And the Grizzlies are into Eastern Washington territory at the 47-yard line. Nine-yard pickup. Montana just content to go underneath the defense. Receivers for Montana watching where Eastern Washington takes their linebacker drops and start dragging in front of it. Look into the eyes of quarterback Dave Dickinson. Good protection. And Guernsey dragging across underneath the linebackers. It's good yardage. At the Eagle 48, Dickinson under some pressure. Arano chasing, got a piece. That's not enough. Still on his feet. Close to the first down. He evokes so many memories of watching Fran Tarkinson in a New York Giant uniform, running circles around in those old NFL films. And Dickinson <laughs> doesn't have great speed, but he is so elusive. You know, Rich, I saw Fran Tarkenton play, and he was running backwards most of the time. Dave Dickinson is uh, always getting positive yardage when he can. Breaks a tackle there. Now he starts to pick up some blockers. What a move. Nice move on Evan Brady. And Evan Brady's a heck of an athlete. Cuts back into the inside. And what you saw there was positive yardage, and no one really got a shot at him. And a nine-yard pickup, second and one. Dickinson wants to go upstairs. Body with an athletic catch and a great move. Damon Body still on his feet. Down to the 17-yard line. The little completions turn into big gainers. Well, especially with the type of receivers and running backs that Montana has. They're very explosive. They're very quick. If they can get a step on you, even though the defense seems to have Damon Body in front, in their sights, so to speak, he still breaks out. Play fake. All of a sudden, well, a feeling a little pressure. Dickinson now goes back underneath the defense. Now watch these moves. Cuts back to the middle of the field. Now move to the outside. First and 10, football at the 16 of Eastern Washington. Eagles are showing blitz, and it looks like Dickinson is changing the play. Here they come. Guernsey. Great defensive play. No flag down. Lee Brown. Got that arm up just in time. We talked about many times you go with all-out blitz, your corners, your secondaries, and man-to-man -man coverage. And Lee Brown was beat on the play, but made a good, good move back to the receiver, back to the football, and got there just in time. Dave Dickinson can really make a defense pay, but Lee Brown, who played a lot on the special teams, uh, last season for Eastern Washington, now in a starter's role. Did a nice job on that play. That's really the first time we've seen Eastern with the all-out blitz since they were burned on that in the first half. They were almost burned there. Second and ten. Dickinson for Baker. Shalon Baker, the touchdown maker. They call him here in Missoula. And that will go as a 17-yard score. The Grizzlies on the board first. 
here in the second half. Eastern Washington came with an outside linebacker blitz with Evan Brady, and Dave Dickinson had to get rid of the football quickly. He did, but watch Baker when he catches this ball on the left side of your screen. He's not even looking back. He turns back just in time. You can't really see it there, but the ball was almost to him when he just turned back. So Dave Dickinson knew he didn't have much time to go, but as soon as Baker got the football, it was pretty clear sailing up the sideline. Larson's kick is good, barely. And the Grizzlies have increased their lead. Shalon Baker with his 19th career touchdown. That's a Montana record. In the second half. Watch the outside receivers of Montana on this play. Again, pass behind the line of scrimmage. Pick up a block. And Shalon Baker, the touchdown maker, as Rich said, in easily. Picked up a nice block up on the outside there by Mike Earhart. Six plays, 63 yards. The Grizzlies had a pair of six-play drives to open the football game. A 15-yard penalty on the extra point against Eastern Washington has Andy Larson kicking this football from midfield. And he'll try to put it through the end zone. He may put it through the uprights. He, he hits the upright. Well, that was fun, but Eastern Washington will get the football now at the 20-yard line. Larson has been trying to kick the ball away from Jason Anderson. Kicked it past him. And now the Eagle offense that was stopped cold comes on for their second drive of the second half. That would be what, a, the equivalent of a 60-yard field goal? Oh, just doesn't quite get it. Some days you get the bounce, some days you don't. And Eastern Washington trailing in this football game for the second time now by 18 points. They were down 21-3 to early on in the first half. Burnett over the middle, in and out of the hands of Anderson. It was tipped and deflected by Blaine McElmurray, the sophomore. McElmurray in his safety position. And uh, Montana had really good bracketing on the receiver. Defender under and over. Play fake here. Remember the last possession, Eastern Washington ran the football quite a bit. The throw, and you can see the two defenders. And uh, Burnett really had to force that one in there a little bit. As quarterbacks will sometimes get hit after the play, that was uh, Keith Jones from his end position delivering a shot. It was more of a love tap. Over the middle, that wasn't a love tap. Eastern Washington, I thought, looking for a flag. They won't get a good defense by Dan Downs, the senior linebacker out of Helena. Dan Downs, who had started 25 straight games for Montana coming into this season. You know, he's one of those linebackers that, again, we talked about very versatile. Uh, you don't have to take him out of a game in passing situations. And, you know, we talked about both teams having players like that. It certainly helps your defense when you don't have to substitute and, and keep a player that can make big plays in the ball game. Third down, incomplete, and Eastern Washington has to punt. And Todd Burnett and the Eagle offense have come up empty on two drives, and they're coming to their feet here in Missoula. They can smell that this game is very close to turning into a runaway. And, Rich, you could sense a little bit of urgency of, with the Eastern offense on that drive. Three straight passes, three straight incompletions. This is a great position on the field for a punt return. Zerflu with the low line drive, and here goes Baker. Good coverage by Eastern Washington as the Eagles covered that punt well. Tom Ackerman, one of the offensive linemen, made the stop. 38-yard punt, two-yard return. As Baker is helped to his feet. It was the Eastern Washington defense that got their football team back into the game in the first half. As they stopped the Grizzlies. Giving the offense an opportunity. They'll have to stop the Grizzlies here. Montana in a big way. 
Bridgewell's Arnie Scalio back in Missoula, Montana, up big. You spoke earlier about Eastern Washington trying to condense the game and control the football. How does Montana do that right now? Because obviously they're not famous for running the ball. Oh, Rich, they're not, but you talk about they have a great, you know, passing possession game where they throw those short passes. It's just like a running game. And uh, it's very, you know, very high frequency. Dave Dickinson, great numbers today. But uh, the, the short passes have been very effective for Montana. They've just taken what Eastern's defense has given them. Eastern blitzed on that last drive, but as you can see, it's a three-man front. Looks like a reverse. Dickinson gets it back. Little flea flick flicker going down the sideline to Damon Body, who makes the catch, who was the second man to touch the football and the last man to touch the football on that play. The flea flicker. I can't believe how Dave Dickinson can make his reads because Matt Wells is the intended receiver. He's He would be at the bottom of your screen. He hears the reverse, the razzle-dazzle, the flea flicker. Back to Dickinson. He's looking for Wells. Now, all of a sudden, Wells is covered quite well. And then there's the throwback to a secondary receiver off a trick play. Dave Dickinson has such a great feel for this offense, understands what's going on, and the whole offense is in at Montana. They put it all in, and he is able to run it. From the 28, this is Chris Morton, the junior in the football game. He's a transfer from Oregon State out of San Jose. They were impressed with him in their first two football games. And he gets his first carry of the afternoon. Something you don't see uh, Montana beat too much of. Run between the guards. Although they have a big offensive front. We'll talk about that interior three of Montana. All sophomores and really outstanding players. Morton catches the football this time. He's got a first down. So many weapons. Morton is the fourth string tailback behind Body, Kelly Stensrud, and Scott Spragans. You know, coming into this game, Rich, 11 receivers in Montana's offense have caught passes, 10 alone in last week's win against Carson Newman. So you can see how versatile the offense is, how they try to include a lot of players, get a lot of players involved, a lot of different weapons. First and 10 at the Eastern 13. Swing pass. And a nice tackle by Jason Williams, the senior out of Cheney. That was a play that connected for a touchdown earlier in the football game. Dickinson to Stenzer. That was touchdown number two. Watch on the left side of your screen, number 74, Scott Gregg, try to get out in front and get a block. Actually, may have pushed the tackler into the running back, but you got to get what you can get when you're out there and blocking away. Montana very methodical. The man they call Lurch. Don Reed said he's the best lineman he's ever coached. Morton in motion. On second and three over the middle. Touchdown, Montana. Shalon Baker. Touchdown number two on the afternoon for Baker. Touchdown number four for Dave Dickinson. Dave Dickinson checking off at the line of scrimmage. A lot of quarterbacks when they go to the line can get you out of trouble. Dave Dickinson is a quarterback in Montana's system. Makes things better. Little roll left. Perfect throw. And there's no way to defense that. Larson trying to increase the lead. He does. Dave Dickinson. Four through the air. One on the ground. He and Mr. Baker have a long season ahead. Montana, third in the nation, living up to that billing. They lead Eastern Washington in the Big Sky opener, 35 10. Twice here in the second half. And they have increased their lead over Eastern Washington. 35 to 10. Somewhere behind that wall of humanity is Shalon Baker. There he is, the career leader in touchdown receptions in Montana history. He has two today and 20 in his career. Jason Anderson trying to get outside, and he's taken down at the 19-yard line. There's a look at Baker in the 
accomplishments, 139 career receptions. He's chasing Bill Cockhill, who finished his year last year. 39 catches last year. He had 48 as a freshman. One of the Smurfs, 5'7", 160 pounds. And now imperative for Eastern Washington to move the football. They have gone three and out in their first two possessions. Both times, Montana has taken the football back and scored. Here comes the blitz. A short screen to David Lewis. And he'll carry a Grizzly on his back all the way out to the 35-yard line. That was Keith Burke who was draped over David Lewis. There was a point in the first half, Arnie, where it looked like it might get out of hand. Montana was on top 21 to 3. And I think we've reached a similar point in the football game now at 35 to 10. Obviously, when, when you're behind, all the drives are important, but even more magnified for Eastern Washington. They've got to get in the end zone, get some points on the board to stay in contact. And give their defense a chance to rest for Anderson. He makes a tremendous catch and pays for it. McElmurray lays the lumber on him, but Jason Anderson holds on. Well, this little guy out of Hoquiam is quite a receiver. As good a catch as you'll see because he really gets nailed by Blaine McElmurray. You can see Burnett steps up and just he gets extended and McElmurray is there and just delivers a tough blow. Watch it here. Boy, that's what you want your free safety to do and I bet you McElmurray can't believe that Jason Anderson hung on to that pass. Great reception. He's had another big day. First and ten. At the Montana 43. Here comes the blitz. Burnett escapes and throws it away. Incomplete. Grizzlies wanted grounding. David Sermon, who recovered a fumble earlier in the game, was putting the pressure on Todd Burnett. Boy, and Burnett really showed the, a pretty nifty move to get out of trouble initially, but then they, they started closing in on him. But Gerald Jackson from his flanker position saying, hey, it was coming to me. Here comes uh, Montana blitzing. Penalty flag goes down after the fact. The officials had a huddle, then threw a flag. Hey, Rich, the, uh, the mechanic on that with the officiating crew is that they will, go, they will go to that side of the field and ask the official, did you have an eligible receiver here? And Mike Kramer and Mike Kramer is not happy. Obviously, he's not happy about the penalty, but I think what, what bothers him most is the delay in the call. Well, for much actually, you have to delay. They have to ask the mm -hmm. other officials where it, it was. Did you have a receiver here? I did not see a receiver anywhere near. So I, I thought that was the proper call. Intentional grounding on the offense. Lots of down. So it's a double dip. Not only are you penalized, but you lose the down as well. Mike Kramer is still not happy talking to Mike Stanley, the referee, but the officials have to confer to see if there was anyone in the area on the call. Hmm. It is a huge penalty because it now becomes second down and 27. They marked that penalty from the point of the grounding, correct? That's correct. So in essence, it's a 17-yard penalty. And a loss of down. So it's second and 27. Anderson made the catch, stays on his feet. And he's down at the 42-yard line. Jason Anderson picks up those 17 yards. And it's third down and 10. And I think Jason Anderson is, is filling the void that Tony Brooks may have left on Eastern's team. Watch the concentration. Ball's tipped. Anderson, the ball goes over his head, stays focused on the football, makes the catch. Jason Anderson's having a great day. Third and ten. Six minutes left. Third quarter. On ten on top, 35-10. Grizzly show blitz. They'll come with four. 
Burnett on the move. Lewis with the catch. He's short of the first down. And now Eastern Washington must make a decision. Well, I think it's a decision they have to go for it, even with 5.30 left in the third quarter. Garrett Venters and David Sermon making the stop. Fourth down and five. You can see Brian Toon putting on some pressure. Number 89, Toon almost getting the Burnett. Fans on their feet sell out here in Missoula. At the Grizzly 38, Burnett to the sideline. Intercepted. Keith Burke. Touchdown, Montana. Burke will get flagged, and he almost pulled a Leon Lett there. Keith Burke with the interception and a touchdown, 72 yards. He felt he had it for sure, and you can see it. He's a little bit out of breath. He turned around to celebrate, Arnie, and he still had one man to beat. Here's a look. You can see a tough throw, and Burke played it quite well from his cornerback position. Now it's a foot race. But Keith Burke will start celebrating a little bit too early here. And Todd Burnett comes back into the play. And I, uh, I'm not sure what happened here, but Burke threw the football Burke, into the wall yeah, and, we'll, Burke, and we'll get penalized Burke for that. Burke jumped up and fired the football, and, and he'll get, I'm sure, a, a celebration penalty. And his defensive coordinator, Jerome Sowers, is, uh, is talking to him there as he is congratulated. But coaches do not like to obviously see that. He's still celebrating. I have a dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike conduct, on the offense, I've got a second dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike conduct, on the offense. You know, he might have gotten an original penalty for the taunt. That's right, and that's a good point. That may have happened. So this extra point's gonna be from 30 yards farther back than it normally is. But here's an interesting point. Was the taunt before the touchdown, or does it matter? I don't think, in that situation, well, let's hear what Mike Stanley Red has ball to say. Foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct. The first flag will be marked off on the kickoff. <laughs> Unsportsmanlike conduct. Dead ball foul. Again on the offense. Will also be on the kickoff. <laughs> Touchdown is good. They may be kicking okay, off so from behind that, their okay, end zone. After, and it was a dead ball. Yeah. Okay, so they're going to be they're going to be basically kicking <laughs> off from the five yard line. <laughs> wow. Keith Burke, 72 yards, and the score. So we got cleared, cleared up on that stand, yes. corrected. And so the, the taunt was apparently after the touchdown. Larson adds the extra point, and Don Reed and his Grizzlies on top in a big, big way, 42 to 10. Here's a look at the sequence after the touchdown. Cannon. And NCAA has been trying to, to clean this kind of thing up, the taunting, and didn't think he thought anyone was close to him. I don't and think then at that point, flags were flying, and then now the ball goes into the wall. So I believe you, you do have a call for the taunt and then probably for throwing the football into the wall. But uh, I stand corrected also, Montana will kick off from the 10. You'll have a 15-yard penalty back from the 35 to the 20, then half the distance. You were close, though. I was close. <laughs> Burnett. Tough day for Todd Long Burnett. day. He threw three interceptions all of last year. He's thrown three interceptions today. Eastern Washington, if they do not come back, would fall to one and one. They take on Weber State at home. You know, this Eastern schedule was rated third toughest in Division I AA football. They'll take on Idaho on October 8th. Here's a look at it. The Eagles 
will travel to take on Utah State, then go on the road to take on always tough Northern Iowa, and I think that's one of the reasons, plus the Big Sky schedule, which propels them to third. Montana is 11th toughest in the nation. They will travel to take on North Texas, and then we'll see these Grizzlies on the road twice on October 22nd and on November 12th. All the tough games seem to be at home for this uh, good home Grizzly, schedule for Montana. Grizzly team. You know, Rich, I don't think I've ever seen a team kick off from their 10 yard line. You see it happen on a safety where they kick off from the 20 or they punt a free kick from the 20, but I've never seen it from the 10. Well, you're about to. Eastern obviously will get great field position. Antonio Morgan is trying to make it even better as he's inside the 40, down to the 36-yard line. There are four and a half minutes left in the third quarter. It's a 42 to 10 ball game, Montana on top. And let's see if Eastern Washington's offense can regroup and maybe get some points. Well, the offense is right back out there after the interception. Angle right back on the field. Picturesque setting, Washington Grizzly Stadium. And the sellout crowd, pretty darn happy at this point. Burnett, short to Nick Shaw, who makes a sliding catch. Seeing some change, uh, one change in the offensive front for Eastern Washington. Ken Henningsen is now in at the right tackle spot. He's been there for the last uh, few series. He's replacing Kevin Cup. Henningsen, interesting story about him uh, with his knee. He had an injured knee and then was showing his teammates how he hurt his knee and then hurt it again while he was showing his teammates. Teammates didn't believe it happened, but he's back in the ballgame. He's number 78 right there in your picture. And Trent, he showed them how he hurt it, and he hurt it. And while he was on the ground rolling around in pain, his teammates thought that was all part of the show. It wasn't. Kind of a crazy game. Morgan in motion. Now on second and six. Over the middle, Hart heard footsteps. Never got extended. And it's third down. Burnett's numbers. If this keeps up, Arnie, he could end up throwing 60 passes in this football game. He could, and I think the number that he's got to really be upset with is that last one, those three interceptions. And when things don't go right, it gets tough, especially when you're behind uh, by a 42 to 10 score. Guys banging around and Todd Burnett obviously not happy. Rex Prescott, the little guy, bounces his way inside the 20. He's got a first down. TJ TJ Ewing from his guard position came on and got a nice block there. We saw a little bit of Rex Prescott in the first half. Watch number 74 in the uh, offensive front sneak out there. Anderson, nice move. And he's close to the 10. They'll mark it short at the 12. And Anderson took a real jolt, I think, from his own teammate there. It was uh, Harold Fox coming out to block. Watch number 39 for Montana, Kurt Schilling, after Anderson catches this pass. A little dump off. Anderson makes a move. And Schilling really had, a, you know, had him in his sights. And not many tacklers are going to tackle Jason Anderson on the first try. Second down and five. Rex Prescott slithers through to the two. Prescott will have the first down. Running behind Henningsen and Harold Fox on the right side of Eastern's offensive front. You know, for a little guy, he doesn't mind taking it up inside when he needs to. And he's got that quickness. If, uh, if you're not going to get there when he hits the, uh, the line, he's going to be by it. Torrey Smith is into the football game at quarterback. Remember, he fumbled the snap back in the first half. Holds on to this one. Smith hands to the fullback and plunging in for the touchdown is Jason Patrick. 
And Rich, that's his fourth touchdown in the last three seasons against Montana. Hasn't scored much in his career, but he's had quite a few against the Grizzlies. He's the Montana specialist. And so Eastern Washington into the end zone. You can see it looked like Torrey Smith might run some speed option. Went with the first one to the fullback. And uh, Jason Patrick made it look pretty easy. The Eagles may just go for two. I think at this situation, you, you really have to. Get as many points as you can while you can. The play clock is down to five. Smith lobs it for Shaw. Incomplete. They'll get only six. And so, the touchdown on the interception by Burke gave the Grizzlies a 42 to 10 lead, but the double penalty gave Eastern Washington great field position, and they score on the ensuing drive. 42 16, Montana on top on Prime Sports Northwest. Two twenty-three left in this third quarter. Next time you will see the Big Sky on Prime Sports Northwest is next weekend. The Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona taking on the Bobcats of Montana State. It's next Saturday will be in Bozeman. Two teams that are very much a part of the Big Sky race and two teams that just might be in the top 20 next week. If the Lumberjacks were to win this this evening, they could crack the top 20 in Montana State, of course, already in that top 20, ranked 13th in the nation. We really have some big early season games that uh, probably go a long way, you know, in helping teams' chances. Obviously, they all do, but uh, some folks enjoying the sunshine. The game's not that bad, is it? I mean, you know. I don't know. <laughs> it looks like almost too much fun. <laughs> Damon Body, a yard deep. Patrick made the initial hit, and Body is out across the 20 to the 21 yard line and so the Montana offense will try to run some clock with a 42 to 16 lead and 217 left in the third quarter. The Irish learning to really hate that state. Michigan that is. Spartans on top. Inside screen, Guernsey with a very rare drop. And it's second down and 10. One thing about, you mentioned in, in running some clock and controlling the football with a short passing game, the danger being if you don't complete the pass, the clock stops. That's correct, but usually in a play like that, obviously a catchable pass, fairly high percentage, screen pass, swing passes, little drag patterns over the middle, and you keep the clock going. Nebraska beating the Bruins. 42-16 here. Montana on top. A little over two minutes left, third quarter. Dickinson on the move. Rob Elmo trying to catch him. He does, and he plants him back at the nine-yard line. Rob Arano had two and a half sacks coming into this game. Uh, it's been fairly quiet throughout the game, uh, working on that side against Scott Gregg. But uh, comes up with a big one there. Dickinson got flushed out, could not get to the outside. He's been doing that most of this game. And here it is. Tries to get to the corner, but Arano had uh, had the angle. And the speed. Eastern Washington's defensive line is a pretty fleet bunch. Very athletic. 3.5 degree in communication disorders. Outstanding players. Already has his uh, degree, as I mentioned, in graduate school. So it's third down and 22. Dickinson over the middle, and it's incomplete. Ryan Moore stepping up, almost had an interception. Nice move on the football by Ryan Moore. And 
It's fourth down. And so Eastern Washington's defense stops. Now, it was four years ago in this stadium, in these two teams, Montana had, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, they had a pretty sizable lead, a 22-point lead. Eastern Washington scored three times in the last five minutes of the football game to win it. LeVon Major, tremendous punt by Guernsey. And good coverage by the Grizzlies. Dennis Skates on the special teams, 52-yard punt by the kid from Tumwater. But that's a situation where you don't mind perhaps your uh, punter out kicking your punt coverage. You're deep in the hole in your own end. And a good coverage by Montana to, to cover that one. Still a net of over 40 yards with the return added to it. Eastern Washington going without a huddle. With a minute six left in the third quarter, they have a lot of ground to make up. They're trailing 42 to 16. Burnett throws short. Nick Shaw with a nice catch close to midfield. Pickup of about six. And it will bring up second down. Eastern Washington trying to get in and out as quickly as they can. Thirty seconds left in this third quarter. On second and five, a short screen, and Garrett Ventures smelled it. No gain on the play. Eastern trying to take a advantage of perhaps an aggressive Montana defense, and Venters wasn't biting on it. Watch right in the middle of your screen, the middle linebacker, number 51, goes right to where the running back is. And Eastern now faced with a third down. Third down and six, and that will be the final play of the third quarter. We head to the fourth. In Missoula, Montana, the Grizzlies lead the Eagles on Prime Sports North. This program is authorized under television rights granted by the Big Sky Conference. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the expressed written consent of Prime Sports Northwest is prohibited. Start. 16 Montana on top of Eastern Washington. We're ready for the starts of the fourth quarter. Rich Waltz, Ari Scalio in Missoula. Next week we'll head down the interstates. Be in Bozeman. Right now, Eastern Washington trailing in this football game by 26 points. Faced with a third down and five from their own 49. Burnett. Incomplete. Garrett Venters is having quite a series. Two plays in a row on pass coverage. It looks like uh, Eastern may punt this one away. Remember that Torrey Smith is on the punt team for Eastern Washington. He's lined up right behind the center, number 10. So Eastern always has that capability of uh, doing something out of punt formation. Smith, the backup quarterback. <laughs> Zerflu will punt it away. Matt Wells is back to receive it. Looks into the sun. Lost his footing. And the Grizzlies will be backed up inside their 10-yard line. And so Dave Dickinson and company will get the football. 44-yard kick by Zerflu, his best of the day. See what Montana does uh, as possessions change. They take their whole offense and huddle on the sidelines, call a play, and then come right in and run the play. Pretty good numbers for Dave Dickinson. For him, though, pretty commonplace the way uh, his career has been going. 
He's only lost one game as a starting quarterback. That was last year in the uh, 1AA first round playoff game to, Rome, or to a Delaware, 49-48. Can't much blame him for that one. He's after putting 48 points on the board. No, he was 37 of 44 in that football game, setting a new 1AA record. Morton is stopped at, looks like about the seven yard line. There's that football game. And now those numbers do not go into his career numbers. Playoff games don't count towards your career. Four touchdowns. So in total last year, in 12 games, Dave Dickinson threw for 36 touchdown passes and ran for 15. It's incredible. There's 51 touchdowns you're accountable for. Faced with second and 10. He's going nowhere this time. Steinmetzer had him. Scott finishes him off along with Jason Morton. And so for the second time now, Eastern Washington has sacked Dickinson. And in the last two series, they've been able to get to him. Things just start closing down. Craig Steinmetzer. And finished off there. Jason Martin. All right, third down at 15. Grizzlies backed up to their own four-yard line. That's Wells in motion. Quick kick. Stensrud. He should get a decent roll. I'd call that decent. Second quick kick we've seen. Well, the backs in Montana's offense are asked to be versatile. You saw... Dave Dickinson, quick kick earlier. Now Stensrud, been effective. 76 yards. When you turn the football over like he did end over end and you hit it just right, it really bounces for you. Timeout on the field. The Grizzlies have done it all today. Mike Kramer and the Eagles need a huge comeback. On the campus of the University of Montana, the Grizzlies have this one well in hand. 42-16 with 13 minutes left in this football game. Todd Burnett and the Eagles backed up to their own 22-yard line. This is deflected and incomplete. Corey Falls, the junior out of Medford. From his left end position. Falls playing back up to Keith Jones. And watch from the left side of your screen, or excuse me, from the right side of your screen, I should say. Gets up in the air. Second down and ten. And things going every right way for Montana right now. There's Stensrud who had that quick kick, the Big Sky record, 88 yards. Jeff Kaiser of Idaho State. There's Falls making the stop. As Eastern Washington keeps the football on the ground. David Lewis, the junior. Eastern Washington with a play we saw them use a lot last year to counter trap. Fully offside tackle and guard come through the hole. But Eastern has to come up with some third down answers here or else their defense is going to go back on the field. Twelve and a half minutes left. In the football game. Burnett looking for Anderson. Jason makes the catch and he tiptoes out of bounds at the 48 yard at the 38 yard line. Quite a day for Jason Anderson. Those 99-yard touchdown passes will uh, improve your stats immensely. But even without that, he's had an exceptional day catching the football. Jackson in motion. And he makes a nice catch at midfield. And so Eastern Washington moving the football. Keith Woods on the coverage for Montana. Eagles working the outside perimeter of that defense. This may sound like a blatant attempt to keep viewership, but Arnie, for Eastern Washington, 
scoring a couple of touchdowns. Is it important as far as the polls go? Because you're playing the number three team in the nation on the road. If you lose 42-16 as opposed to, say, 42-25 to or 26, is it, it, will that make any difference as far as the voters go? As Burnett goes up top. Anderson, the catch, the touchdown. That will make a difference, at least on the scoreboard. Burnett. 50-yard strike. Jason Anderson just had one of the, having one of the great days a receiver has ever had. Nine catches now, 236 unofficially. One touchdown, that 99-yarder uh, in the first half. But what a day he is having. Great throw by Todd Burnett, too, to Jason Anderson. Takes the sting out of it a little bit, but uh, Eastern Washington still about uh, 20 points behind, going for two, the swinging gate. Montana reads it, goes with it, and they line up for the PAT. Zerf flu. It is good, and so Eastern Washington goes up top. Todd Burnett to Jason Anderson. The Eagles with still a long ways to go. Eastern Washington a little bit closer. Jason Anderson continues with a tremendous afternoon for the Eagles. He's got a pair of scores. Montana on top, 42-23. 12 minutes left. Eastern Washington obviously needs to get the football back and a quick score. Zerflu will kick it away. Body at the eight. Ball. Grizzlies got it back. I think Body was down originally. And that's where the Grizzlies get the football now. Rich, kind of an interesting series here for Montana because obviously you don't want to turn it over. Obviously you don't want to go three and out. But uh, what Eastern's defense got to hope is to take them out of the drive quickly and score quickly. It's a familiar sight. Anderson on the sideline after a score. 50-yard reception. He's got a 99-yard reception. Come on, uh, Anderson's uh, 237 passing yards, we're told, is an Eastern Washington school record. And he's still short of the Big Sky record, which is 299 yards by Nevada's Tramiel Taylor against, ironically, Montana. Body with an acrobatic catch, but he'll lose a good eight or nine yards. Good coverage and a nice play by Evan Brady. Obviously, Eastern Washington feeling like they are not, they are not out of this football game. And you can see the coach is still working very hard with that defense, trying to take Montana out of the drive, and that was a great start for him. And people thought this game might be a shootout. Obviously still has that potential with the score the way it is now. But a lot of the coaches thought it just might be a defensive game. That obviously has not uh, worked today. Second and 18, inside handoff, a draw to body, breaks a tackle and is back close to the original line of scrimmage. Gain of about seven, bringing up a third down and around 11. Lee Brown on the tackle for Eastern Washington. Rich, I like that call because not only is it is it a safe call, um, you make seven or eight yards, you get back into a third and maybe 10 or 11 situation instead of maybe a third and in 18 or 19, and you really give your offense a chance to make it. Not that Montana couldn't make a third and 19 with the way Dave Dickinson's been throwing the football. Little, little higher percentage play. Dickinson trying to milk as much time as he can off the play clock. He lost the football. But recovers, going deep. Baker open. Can't make the catch. Just overthrown. That would have ended it with a resounding thud. Dave Dickinson very unhappy with himself. D didn't handle the snap. And, you know, the, the rhythm of the play, I think, went off. Snap was a little wobbly. He obviously did not look it in. But he rolls, and he, now he sees Baker behind the defense and gets it out there for all he's worth and just overthrows by a little bit. But Eastern, I think, has a flicker of light here. We'll probably get this football in pretty good field position. Scott Guernsey's had a good day punting the football. LeVon Major is deep. In 
some traffic, a short return. And now Eastern has to strike quickly. They still need three scores. Well, their last possession was about uh, as quick as you can do it. Athletes of the Week brought to you by Cenex. The Spirit Shows. Mr. Dickinson, Mr. Lewis, the quarterback for Northern Arizona, Jason Hicks of Montana State, Casey Adams of Boise State. Senex, the spirit shows. Burnett steps up and in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Nick Shaw. Dan Downs had a good drop from his middle linebacker position. But as you mentioned, Nick Shaw had the ball go through his hands. That Montana defense will try to lock in and get some kind of a pass rush. Dan Downs, a uh, two-time All-Big Sky pick, number 55. Runs from sideline to sideline. There's a lot of pressure right now on Todd Burnett. A little page out of the Montana playbook. The Grizzlies obviously have seen that one in practice as Jay Turner was there to stop it. And it's a third down situation. Trying to hit in there with a little bit of a delay. Jay Turner, who was the top junior on the defensive front in 83. He can either play end or tackle. You see, he gets good penetration, fights off his block, and pulls down that 185-pound running back. Third and 11. From the 32. Burnett lost the football. Is it a fumble? It's picked up. It's Turner. It's a touchdown. Oh, man. Jay Turner picked up the loose football. Burnett was hit as he started to throw. And Montana forcing their fifth turnover of the football game. You can see the ball just comes out. You know, Hansi Manzanares was given to Todd Burnett lots of pressure. And Turner is the recipient of the fumble and the touchdown. And so the Grizzlies now have scored two touchdowns with their defense. Keith Burt's 72-yard interception return. And Jay Turner's fumble recovery. This one is in the books. John Reed, a happy man. His Grizzlies are headed to 3-0. We'll be back after this. Five Eastern Washington turnovers have made a real difference, as has Montana's big play defense. 49-23, but 9-21 left in the fourth quarter. Larson to kick. Jason Patrick will take it. Patrick, who's a jack of all trades for this football team. Here's a look at that uh, touchdown again. It was Johansi Manzanares who put the pressure on Burnett. Let's see if he got a piece of him. Yep. Got just, just does on the outside. Manzanares who's probably the most, uh, well, one of the most underrated players on this Montana team. But uh, he's happy for Jay Turner. He doesn't care who gets it in the end zone. And Turner gets his touchdown. First and 10 Eastern Washington with 9 minutes, 16 seconds left. Rex Prescott out across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Bernie Sock, the junior out of Ukiah, made the stop. Michigan State increasing their lead over number nine, Notre Dame. It'll be a big shot in the arm for that Spartan program. Prescott takes a good hit. After a gain of maybe four. Mike Boucher, the sophomore out of Missoula. And there's an eagle down. 
Looks like Kevin Peterson, the freshman center out of Port Orchard, Washington. Peterson playing the center position, as you mentioned. Uh, T.J. Ewing, who was the center last year for Eastern Washington, moved over to the left guard position. And Peterson, a redshirt freshman. Tom Embry, the trainer at Eastern Washington, out to take a look at uh, Kevin Peterson. And Rich, that's one thing that uh, Eastern Washington has good players in their front. They don't have a great deal of depth. Behind Peterson at center is a, uh, a true freshman, Steve Davis, number 56, who was a walk-on at spring football. The Eagles are a senior-dominated team in a lot of areas, defensively especially. They do have a pair of seniors on that offensive line in Harold Fox and T.J. Ewing. Coming up on Prime Sports Northwest, Washington State and UCLA. Next week, it's live at 3.30 from Pasadena. Those Bruins today taking on Nebraska. And the Cougars, of course, getting a day off. Both the Cougars and the Huskies with buys. Peterson gets a nice round of applause from the uh, Montana fans. He's taken off the field. And they were looking at that right ankle. Looks like they've moved Tom Ackerman over to the center position and moved in Aaron Barfield at the left tackle spot. There's that Bruins score, Nebraska 28-7 halftime lead. They don't miss a thing in the truck. David Lewis has the first down on third and short. And he's inside Grizzly territory. Bill Cooper, our producer director. Curtis Big Ticket Wilson getting those scores from around the nation. Curtis is unbelievable. They're unbelievable. How they do all that stuff together. Eight minutes left in this football game. 49-23, Montana on top. First and 10, Eastern Washington. Burnett on play action, going up top, and overthrowing Nick Shaw, who has covered step for step there. Blaine McElmurray on the coverage. Along with Mike Temple. Second down and 10 for Eastern Washington. The Eagles next week hosting Weber States. Montana next week traveling down to Denton, Texas to take on North Texas. Burnett in trouble, dumps it off, incomplete. And it's on second down and 10, so it's third down and 10. A long afternoon for the senior out of Moses Lake. Lots of yards. But those three interceptions have played a big part in this football game. But Corey Falls from his uh, left defensive end position put a lot of pressure on Todd Burnett. Nice spin move by Falls. And Burnett has become all but too familiar with this Montana defense. And especially in this situation, Montana defensively can really uh, pin their ears back and come hard with the pass rush. It's a quarterback and an offense in a tough situation. Antonio Morgan. That was a good throw. And Sean Go Goikachia backed up a strong safety to his brother Mike Goikachia in the Grizz, what they call the Grizz position in the Montana defense. Played in all 12 games in 93, mostly on special teams, but uh, getting a shot in on that play. Sometimes it doesn't pay to be a receiver if your quarterback makes you extend. Watch what happens at the end of this play. Ouch. It would have hurt a lot less had he held on to the football, though. Here's Gokachia. Fourth down and 10. Burnett over the middle. Anderson has the catch, but not the first down. He's short after a pickup of eight yards. And so Montana will take over on down. 
And the fans here in Missoula coming alive, saluting the defense. And Rich, these are good football fans. I mean, they appreciate, you know, you always hear a lot about the offense at the University of Montana, the numbers they rack up, but, but these people really appreciate good defensive play. And every time Montana has made a stand against a good offensive team from Eastern Washington, they have uh, welcomed their defense off the field with a rounding, uh, rounding, rounding applause. I mean, just a really loud and appreciate, appreciative of what they've done. Dickinson to the air, Baker the catch. Brady makes the stop. One thing about the Montana defense that I believe is overlooked is the fact that they have to face so many series in a game. And what I mean by that is Montana puts so many points on the board, the defense is on the field an awful lot because the, the Grizzlies score quickly. I mean, their drives are a minute, two minutes a pop, and then the defense is right back on the field. Rich, one of the things Montana has defensively this season is they have some depth and they run a lot of people in. They play a lot of people. Dickinson on first and ten. This is Matt Wells. And it's target practice right now for the Grizzlies. At the 29-yard line. Lee Brown. 39-23. A couple of substitutions in the Montana offensive front. You still have Scott Gregg, the right tackle. Now you have Rich Gockley at the right guard position. New center in there as well as Bob Fenton. And I uh, believe that's uh, Jeff Zellick over playing at the left guard right now, and Eric Simonson, the starting left tackle, is still in the game. So the offensive front changing just a little bit. Stens root in motion. Dickinson directing traffic, throwing back across. Guernsey the catch. Guernsey is free, and he's out of bounds. First down, Montana. Eastern Washington, again, did a pretty good job of keeping Dave Dickinson contained, but, you know, how long can you let him sit in there before someone's going to break free in the secondary? It's a good matchup between Scott Gregg at the right tackle and Rob Aronow from his uh, defensive end position. But Gregg is so big at 6'9", if he gets his hands on you, his arms are so long, it is tough for a defensive player to get by him. And people remember Kevin Sargent of Eastern Washington the same way. That's why he's, you know, will play in the NFL. Uh, really good attribute to have when you have those long arms and a defender cannot grab a hold of your shoulders. Earhart's in motion. Back to the air goes Dickinson and it's knocked down. Incomplete. Charging in Josh Braswell of Eastern Washington. Watching the right side of your screen. Rushwell is not blocked. Goes up high, and Dickinson has one swatted right back in his face. Second down and 10. Blitz coming. Ooh, man. Hello, Mr. Dickinson, Evan Brady. It looks like Dickinson was trying to set up one of those shovel passes, and it did not develop, and he had to eat the football. Evan Brady, who has come in a couple of times, uh, probably feels a little better about, about this play. He was successful, was able to get to the quarterback, but Dickinson had no chance at all. You could see Wells just about to come into your picture. That was the shovel pass. Brady got there in a hurry, but there were a couple times today when he didn't get there. Had a big week last week. He's had a very active day today. So it's third down and 18 now. From the 19. Another one of those guys, Rich Evan Brady, who can uh, play pass coverage, play against the run, do a lot of different things. Montana takes a timeout. The play clock was running down. And Dickinson didn't want to take a penalty. We'll break also. Montana in control, looking to add to a huge lead. 49-23 on Prime Sports Northwest. Complete. Penalty flag goes down. Kelly Stensrud was the intended receiver. There is a flag down in the Montana backfield. And it looks like this is going to be a holding call. Evan Brady, the Eastern captain. 
Right. Well, the question here, does Eastern Washington want Montana to kick the field goal now or push them back a little bit further and still give Dickinson a third down and long? Mike Kramer uh, asking his defense to move it back. Yeah, we were talking about that offensive front of Montana, Rich, and they're just so gigantic oh, across the... On the offense, third down. Across the front line, you have Eric Simonson at 291, the left tackle. Mike Agee, when he's in there, at left guard, 285 at 6'5". David Kempert, the center, 6'4", 278. Gets better. Jeff Zellick, the right guard, 6'5", 296. And then Scott Bragg at 6'9", 305. And the backups are every bit as big. So it's a huge offensive front. And they do a good job protecting their quarterback. Third down of the bunch, 36 to go. They can get a first down if they get to the one. That won't do it. Earhart out of bounds at the 28-yard line. So we'll see Andy Larson now. He will come on to attempt a field goal. And this is well within his distance. This is going to be about a 49-yarder, somewhere in there. Yeah. Man, let's call it about a 46 or 47 yard. Larson missed earlier today. Final moments of that second half. This kick is blocked. And it picked up. Kick was blocked by Rex Prescott. Little Rex Prescott at five foot five. Jay Turner picked up the loose ball. Prescott lined up on the outside. He has that good quickness. And now there's something you don't see very often a running back on special teams, especially the size of Prescott. Watch this from the left side of your screen. There he is lined up all the way to the left. And he goes in untouched. Got the angle. Just like you'd like to draw it up if you were on the defensive side. Five minutes, six seconds left, and the Eagles trailing in this one, 49-23. Still wanting to put points on the board, though. Burnett being chased by Manzanares. Anderson tiptoes out of bounds. And he's got a nice gain. You know that record of 299 total yards in receiving, although he still has probably about 40 yards to go, is within there he's got 263 now. Good concentration. Nice throw by Burnett rolling to the right. The loop it in there. Let's see if he gets his feet down. Oh, nicely done. Very nicely done. Got the first foot down. The second one was not in bounds. The first one was. Jason Anderson having a big down. 263 yards in receiving. Hart couldn't come away with it. The coverage by Jason Hazel, the junior out of Fort Lauderdale. And it's incomplete. Second down and 10. Burnett is approaching 55 pass attempts. He could get to 60 before the day is done. Wholesale substitutions for Montana's defense now. I've seen a lot of numbers out there we have not seen play today. Shotgun. He'll lose a yard. Greg Fitzgerald came in on the tackle. Freshman Richard out of Columbus, Montana. Third down and 10. Clock continues to roll. Four and a half left in this football game. Montana impressively, and obviously if Marshall or McNeese State were to stub their toes today, Marshall is at Georgia Southern, so that's a possibility. McNeese State plays Central Arkansas. The Grizzlies might move up. Burnett hit hard, but delivers to Nick Shaw, and Shaw has some open field. He's inside Grizzly territory, and down to the 37-yard line. Shaw cut back to the center of the field, picked up a couple of blockers. Tried to get back outside, but was unable to do it. Seventeen-yard pickup. 
A red shirt freshman out of Prosser, Washington is that man hiding behind the post. Nick Shaw. Burnett going deep. Open is Jackson. Makes the catch. Touchdown. Gerald Jackson. Jason Hazel, the cornerback over there for Montana. Thought was in coverage. But uh, Jackson made it look pretty easy. Another touchdown pass for Todd Burnett. You know, Burnett is approaching some pretty big numbers as far as yardage goes also. Gerald Jackson. With his second career touchdown, 38-yard pass. And Eastern Washington will go for two into the ball game. Torrey Smith as the quarterback. He throws incomplete. Looking in the back of the end zone. We'll take a quick timeout. So Eastern Washington scores again, but they still trail with 343 left on Prime Sports Northwest. There's your score. Eastern Washington has missed a pair of two-point conversions. And with 343 left, the Eagles trail in this football game 49-39. Onside kick. What do you think? Sure, why not? No. <laughs> All right. Todd Burnett. 487 yards, 30 of 59. Cool record for today for Eastern Washington. His third touchdown. You can see Gerald Jackson right next to him. I think Burnett is going to get the football again. The Big Sky record for most yards passing a whopping 624 by Jamie Martin, the Weber State quarterback against Idaho State. That was in 1991. Here's that onside kick, and it's recovered by the Grizzlies. Greg Fitzgerald, who was untouched after he made the recovery. And now Montana. Last time the Grizzlies had the football, Arnie, they threw the football in a ball game that, in a situation where the conclusion of the game, or, or at least the, the outcome of the game, is no longer in doubt. Now, I'm not saying they're running the, the game up or running the score up, but Montana is not a football team that, that runs much. So, I mean, their normal offense is to throw it's, the ball. Yeah, to pass the ball, and that's what, what they normally do. And they you, both are throwing the ball an awful lot, as you can see. They will run it here. Morton inside the 40. He is not related to Clint Morton. Montana State. A couple of good running backs over at Montana State. Fred Moore and Clint Morton. Chance Chris Morton. Excuse me. Chris Morton. This is Chris Morton here, the junior transfer from Oregon State. We'll see Mr. Moore and Mr. Morton next week. Big Sky Country, Missoula, Montana. Morton again, close to the first down. And it will bring up third down and uh, very short. About two. There's Dickinson, 34, 47, 423 yards. These two quarterbacks have combined for what, almost 900 yards through the air. Typical day in the big sky. I don't know about typical. <laughs> Last 15 years, we're throwing the football an awful lot. Morton runs over one of his own blockers, reverses his field. And he's finally hauled down after he picks up a first down. Troy Turner there to make the stop. Morton did a nice job, ran into Troy Lucas, his uh, left guard, number 57. I think it got him picked up a little bit. Watch right at the beginning of his play. See number 57 on the left. And. Uh, See him fight off the uh, the contact, head outside. That ovation you might have heard in the background was a hand for Scott Gregg. Oh my, the Bears are getting beaten by by the Rainbow. 
Hawaii, who did a number on the Ducks last week, leading Cal 14-7. Former Big Sky coach Keith Gilbertson, of course, at Cal, with a tough loss last week at San Diego State. So the WAC kind of, for the time being right now, doing a number on the Cal Bears. Speaking of the WAC and speaking of the Pac-10, Utah's a very good football team. They showed that last week, destroying Idaho State. And they're beating Oregon on the road right now in the third quarter. Minute 10 left in this one, second down and seven. Dickinson gives to Morton, and he's hauled down from behind. Josh Purcell making the stop. So it's third down. You know, Rich, with as much passing as we've had today, this is uh, about as much as the clock has run in any, uh, any period during the, this entire football game. Eastern Washington uh, content not to, uh, to stop it, to let it go. Dickinson, a one-yard run, started the scoring. 22-yard field goal, put Eastern Washington on the board. Third down and seven. Morton on the ground. Down at the 28-yard line. That'll be the final play of this football game. Montana living up to their third ranking in the nation. Beating Eastern Washington, a team that many thought and probably still do think could contend for a Big Sky title, but today it's Montana. Dave Dickinson, the junior. Another impressive day. And most of the folk that have been chasing him all afternoon finally get a piece of Dave Dickinson. Final score from Missoula. The Grizzlies 49, the Eagles 29 on Prime Sports Northwest.